Hello. 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 Uh, hello. 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 Thank you. Oh, hello, Skylar. Hello, Jasmine. Hello, Kat. Quasi. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is so nice. This is so Hugo. Hello. Good afternoon. Good. Professor, would you like to meet my cat? Yes, I would. That is, <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I would. By cracky. That's the, hello. Oh, sorry. And I'm, while the cat is being, uh, hello, Crystal. Hello. Hello, Gay. Gabrielle, or Gay, which I'm saying wrong, Gabrielle, hello, Veronica, hello, Kelliana, and I'm sorry I'm saying it wrong. Oh, there's the cat. What's the cat's name? This is Vinny. <laughs> so your cat's name is Vinny. Is is his Vinny named Cat? What, sorry. I'm ah, just... very nice. Let's see what you did there. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, cat squared. <laughs> but yes, thank you for introducing me to your cat. By the way, what type of cat is that I'm gonna He's have. a, a long-haired black cat. I think he's a Persian. Wow, all right, this is cool. I just want to say to everybody that, that whether it's fair or not, I want everybody to realize that a thing like that, like introducing me to a cat, that totally counts as class participation. Uh, we're gonna talk more about it today, but if you think that that doesn't get, if you get 50 points for saying hello in the chat, or like saying something about a physics uh, uh, acceleration, you definitely get 50 points for bringing a cat into this class. And that applies to everybody. Uh, anything to be, yes, so thank you. I'm definitely pleased to meet your cat. Oh, and my dog. <laughs> all right, we are setting all, we're breaking all kinds of ground here. We're setting new precedents. I wanna see the dog as soon as, it, in fact, I challenge, any, I'll give 150 points to anybody who puts video on just their animal and leaves them and has their animal taking notes no, I'm kidding. But uh, wait, he's a super. Oh, yeah, okay, where is the cat? Wait, what, uh, wait, where? Wait, who's where? Someone sees the wait, cat sees the dog and is saying super cute, but I'm not seeing. Wait, Jack. Okay, wait, why am I not seeing? Hold on. Is this like a secret? Oh, there. Wait. I'll bring him back. Hold on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, my God. This, this has never happened before. This is definitely setting new ground. Oh, wait, more people in the waiting room. Oh, they're all missing this. Oh, everybody in the waiting room is missing the animals. Actually, they're probably all get out getting their like. They're cockroaches in there. Uh, what's that kind of animal that everybody has now in college? It's so weird. Oh yeah, people have pet rats. I mean, I will say if you have a pet rat, I'll give you the points privately and you can keep the rat to yourself privately. Like not, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to offend any pet. What? Huh. Jack. Oh, what? oh, it's named Rec? Jack. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry. Oh, Jack, awesome. I love animal names that are like human names. That's great. So we've got Jack. We've got cat. I mean, no, 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 no. Sorry, we've got cat. <laughs> sorry, that's so bad. We've got Vinny. Anybody? This is big fan of chat. <laughs> all right, and all and anybody who hasn't noticed. Also, this is a very long class, and it's just as long to me as it is to you. So, I'm. This is fine. We are going to cover the material, even with animal interludes. So, I hope it's clear. This is totally. This is quite acceptable. We need this. Um, Dang my fish. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's how, I mean, I don't want to, now I'm going to laugh that someone's talking about their dead fish. I don't want to laugh, but I kind of am. <laughs> and everybody's getting, the other, my cousin Vinny. Oh, that was a great movie. I didn't, it always blows my mind that you guys have seen movies that I've seen. I don't know how that happened, but I guess that's the power. Wait, um, RIP, Jesus. Oh my God, I'm glad my six-year-old is not in the room. So I'd have to explain death to him through your animals. I mean, he just thinks that when you die, you just, you know, you get respawned and you get your Pokemon back. Um, Hold on, I'm just trying to catch up here. One other thing that's funny about this, and I am stalling, I'm sorry, but I love the fact that you guys are giving me these pet names even when the pet's not alive because you know, it's I, all I could do to barely keep up with your names. And I really am trying, but if I have to like memorize all the pet names now and give them grades, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, whoa, well, that's almost a serious, wow. Thanks Veronica for that question. Um, Well, because my name is Yaverbaum. I mean, it's just a total, like I just decided a long time ago that my favorite element is euterbium just cause it like looks like it's saying, it looks like my name is turned into a chemical element to me. That's the only, also I love the number one, like the fact that the atomic weight of euterbium is 173.04, I kind of love because my favorite numbers are seven and three or three and seven. Um, I have five cats. Oh my God. No, no, I'm not learning five cats. Unless they're all named George Foreman. I don't think I can do it. Um, 
that, but that is cool. Yes. Um, oh, 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 that's cool. Meaning me. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, wait. Okay. Um, and yeah, you know, it used to be a thing. Oh. oh, no, that's a fair question too. That's almost like, what device am I using to write on the, uh, the device is, and I know, and I apologize. I know it could be better, but it, uh, okay. The device is actually a Samsung um, Galaxy um, uh, Note thing. What, what do you call it? It's, 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 um, oh, cool. Thanks. I will say that I like it a lot. I do, I, I need to work on my handwriting and all that, but yeah, the actual device um, it's, and it's how you'll see, oh, maybe I think this is a good segue. I think we're going to talk about homework in a few minutes. And I think I'm hoping that this is a class where a lot of you got back your home. I think a lot of you did it and got it back. Well, I better check before I say anything. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, well, I'll always post the notes. Oh, good. Okay. And it's, and I'll just say quickly, as long as we're sort of segueing, talking about this device, I actually do grade your homework on this device. I see like one of the reasons I'm all so strict and weird about the PDFs and everything, even though it turns out that's silly and I'll explain that. But as you can see, I actually try to, I grade your homework like with a stylus and it's wonderful to me to be able to do that. I mean, um, because then I, you know, but it's all electronic. So like, you don't, I can grade like in the old days, but what I don't have to do is manage all the files like in the old days. Um, so yeah, I do like this device. Also for what it's worth, if any of you know, Professor Walters from last semester, um, I also play chess with him on this device. Um, um, like, like all the time, like we're always just trading moves. All the, we're always in the middle of a chess game. And I want to say that he always wins. Um, and, you know, it takes a lot for me to be able to admit that. Um, um, but he is a, boy, is he good. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, of course. Oh, no, of course it's okay to do whatever you use. Yes, yes, you should use whatever device works for you. Um, now, to get back to the class, I will say a couple of things. I hopefully you, um, I, all right, so let's go back to this class. Um, I, um, we're, we're going to get to the material. We're going to start going over a thing on a spring, which yeah, you guys did and you got it back and that's great. Uh, but I don't think, uh, but we have to keep talking about that material and move on with the material. But, um, what was I going to say? But I did spend some time this week trying to really see the Google classroom from your, like we've used Google classroom for a while in physics, but I think it's particularly become important in this whole COVID zoom thing. So just so you know, I may have mentioned this last time, but um, you know, I have two kids, I mean, in real life, and one of them is in kindergarten. And in kindergarten, they're actually in school four days a week, God, thank God. I mean, they're in physical school four days a week, but one day a week, it's all Zoom school. And of course, there's been a million snow days, cancellations and stuff. So they have a lot of Zoom school and they use Google Classroom. And again, this is, I'm talking kindergarten now. I mean, I'm here to make a, like a silly point, but my kindergartner uses Google Classroom and Zoom to do his school. And I have to say that my, his mother and I find ourselves frequently more stressed trying to keep up with his kindergarten than I ever remember feeling in graduate school, like the 85 times I went. Like it's super, like we never know where his assignments are. We never know where the freaking link is when we need it. Like it, it seems to change all the time. Like we never know, and I'm exaggerating, of course, like everybody's doing fine. I think he's going to graduate kindergarten and I think my wife and I will make it. But like it's surprisingly stressful to us how hard it is just to keep up with the management of his school. And this is freaking kindergarten. So it occurred to me watching us go through this, I realized uh, like no matter what I do on my end, your end is looks completely different and is completely stressful even in the best of scenarios. So what I did try to do this weekend, I made, you know, I turned myself into a student in all my Google Classroom files so I can constantly check in and see what it looks like from your point of view, and I wish it looked better, but I'm trying to keep it organized for you guys as best as I can. I'm open at all times to feedback such as like, please put the Zoom link in the name of the class. Like someone told me to do that last week. I thought that was a great idea. I'm trying to keep the Zoom links and the U YouTube links like clear and organized for you. But I, I'm saying all this because someone just thanked me in the chat for posting the notes from last semester. That's the least, that is one thing I totally will do. We might not always take as many notes, but every single time I'll definitely put a PDF of the notes in your um, right away into the Google Classroom as just like material. And every single time I will post, I will put this up on YouTube. It takes a couple of hours, of course, but then I will post the link to the YouTube uh, 
like I think you'll see there, our very first lecture last week, I don't think we did a ton. I, I, I can't imagine you need it, but it's there. Um, and you'll need them more and more as we get closer to exams. I can't imagine anybody ever sitting and watching one of these, although I do have former students who evidently do, but I could not ever, not only am I not requiring it, but I wouldn't even suggest ever sitting down and watching like a YouTube recording of one of our physics classes. I can't think of anything more boring or embarrassing, but what I would recommend, especially as we get closer to exams or as the material piles up, for sure, like if you think you might've missed something, you're trying to do something, just put the YouTube thing on in the background somewhere and, and note that you can turn on the subtitles as cheesy and weird as it is. You know, you can do the closed captioning thing. So if you just have occasionally, if you have the YouTube of some class running in the background, just so that you can scroll uh, like ahead and back just to find like, cause there's all this, all this dead air, of course, where we're just like talking. But if you just scroll to where things start happening in the lecture notes of that day, I think that can be helpful. So you can just like see what we did. But I, so I'll always post that and I'll always post, um, if I don't forget, um, a PDF of the notes right after. So, I mean, thank you for saying thank you. But yeah, you can, I think you can rely on that as part of the class. Um, and all that is just to make it easier. Like I'm not requiring that you do anything with any of that stuff. Um, um, but as long as we're saying, but today we're going to keep talking about springs, but I also do want to deal with these logistical things. Like I want at any moment today, especially because it's long, we've got the time, we're not in a rush. At any moment that any of you has a question, there's a student in the waiting room. Thank you. For example, that. Great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Wait, and sorry. Uh, see, how long did I keep? Thank you. Thank you for it. Does it is that hard to get my attention? I'm sorry. Yeah. That's too, and by the way, how do you guys know that? Like, how does it, does she tell you because she's friends with you or do you see it on your screen? That someone's in the waiting room, I mean. I got a text from someone saying she was in the waiting room. Oh, okay, wow. So, you, okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, all right, and I think she's in now. So you really do have to be friends for this tour. Okay. Um, oh, and right now, why is, oh, and you're seeing the Google, right, that wasn't what I meant to do, but okay. Um, so please interrupt me at any time, whether it's in the chat or vocally anything about class administration, like grades, stuff like that. I, I, I'd rather it be a dialogue and I'd rather be explaining it as we go than like sit and like read the syllabus word for word or whatever. Um, so please feel free. And again, just know that I think this is madness and I think it, it's the more clear we can make it the better. Um, and as you can see, I space out and I, I won't, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, um, and I'm at Ms. Singh, wait, uh, um, I don't want, again, not to, but just to, am I saying it right if I say Bonietta? Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay, great. And sorry about that. Were you waiting for a lot, like a super long time? I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I was waiting for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, God, all right. That's, um, sorry. Uh, the other thing to all of you, okay, and I, uh, uh, yeah, that's my bad. And to all of you, though, to see, you see, I have this bad habit. Even if I keep the video on, once I start talking, I start looking other places. And I, and so it's not rude if you bring, if any of you brings me back to reality at any point, even just to say, like, even to say, look at your, look at the chat, professor, or something. Like, because I will do that, and I don't want to do that. So basically what I'm saying is it's not rude to interrupt in this class. It's necessary to interrupt me. I mean, and you'll know, you'll, if it's truly rude, you'll know. Um, okay, okay, so that's that. All right, let me go back to, okay, so we're back to here. So my goal is to start going, talking, to continue going over thing on a spring. I think we, oh, no, no, yes, that is my goal. But again, stop me with any administrative questions as we go whether it's about homework or what's due or anything. Oh, okay, I'll say this. Technically right now, like, like right now, you might have things due in lab. For me, what was technically due today was a thing on the spring. And then I think, yeah, you got it back. There will be something due next Monday. I haven't posted it yet. Um, it, to be honest, it might depend on how far we get in talking about a thing on the spring today. But, you know, if I don't post it, if I don't post it by like um, Saturday or something, that's, unreasonable and you know then don't worry about it for monday assuming i posted before then technically it'll be due monday i do want um there's always an opportunity to do homework late or better later like it, it's never too late to do homework um and yes oh, oh yes 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 oh no 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 i'm gonna start going over 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I'm really trying to say is I don't even want to assign you anything more until we've properly finished going over homework one, which we have not. I de And question nine is the doozy of homework one. We have to spend a while on it. it there's, we do. And you're going to hear about it in lab as well, question nine. So if we end up pausing on that for a while and you and you don't get another homework for a little bit, that's okay. Or if you get another homework, you never have to be you never have to be substantially ahead of me. Like in other words, as long as we're continuing to talk about homework one in class, then the worst thing that, then the most that you have to do is homework two. But even if homework three ends up in your portal or something, don't stress it until we're up to it. Um, oh, right, oh, 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 I meant to ask this too, thank you. I am seeing the chat. Good point, I keep saying Monday, but we don't have, yes. Thank you, I actually, and yes. Okay, this is great. First of all, again, let me say, this is the way I prefer to do class. Like, I like the fact you're putting all this in the chat. I'd rather just respond to your questions than have a whole big speech. And I feel bad when I space out and miss your chat, but I'm seeing it all now. So we're totally gonna address this. First of all, I meant to ask, but I think you are right that maybe someone wants to verify, but I think you're right that Monday- Yeah, is we have a four day weekend, Friday and Monday. Monday is President's Day. Fantastic, all right, thank you. So. Anything right now that I'm saying, anything that's in your classroom, and I'll change this in the next couple of minutes, but right, so then nothing is due Monday. It would be due two Mondays from now. That being said, I probably will put one more homework in the, we don't want to go too long without, you know, something to do. But so I will probably put a homework two in the stream and it would be due the next week or whatever. But we're going to continue to be talking about homework one today and possibly into next Monday. We'll see. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to, set, to say to you all that at any given moment, I will know if I'm behind you and I will know that that's the case. So I will never hold, the concept of late on homework is a somewhat fluid concept. The point is just, the, homework starts looking like late to me if you're turning it in way after we finished going over the whole thing. Then we're into like maybe a different zone of academic integrity and stuff. And we could talk about that. But as long as I have not finished going over something, or even if I just did, then it's still fair game for you to hand in stuff and to benefit from that class. Um, now, so, okay. Okay, so we don't have school Monday, so there won't be a lot. So you'll kind of have two relaxing weeks here. I mean, anyway, I do need to explain this whole game business. Yes, yes, yes. The game business I know is confusing. I definitely want to explain that here and now. Um, and yes, I think it is time to do that. Um, so, 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 uh, this is a bit, so let me back up and explain how homework points work in, or how, how grading works in general. I mean, so what I'm about to say is technically in the syllabus and technically you have a syllabus now, I don't think you did before, but I think it's in your stream now you can check. Um, but of course it's a, it's an important document, but it's a boring document. Um, and, and what that, that, that document that's called syllabus that's now in your Google Classroom thing, that's technically a syllabus, like that is the rules and procedures and expectations and grading policies. It's not necessarily a calendar of classes. We still have to give you that, um, I think. Um, but, but as far as grading is concerned, here's the thing, here's basic things to know. Um, uh, there's two portions to this class, the lecture portion and the lab portion, like Yaverbaum and Walters. In the end of the day, you get one grade for the whole class. I mean, that's the way it works at John Jay. But what that means in our grading system is like 40% of your grade comes from everything you do in lab and 60% comes from this lecture. Um, and I, I think you'll find that's, that is, I mean, you do a lot of work in lab. So I think that breakdown is, works to people's advantage. And people don't generally get bad grades in lab either, as long as they do the work. Um, <laughs> So 40% of your grade is gonna come from everything you do for Walters. And at the end of the semester, and again, I forget, for, please forgive me if this is boring, but I think it's so important to people that we need to be clear about it. And so ask me questions when I'm done. Um, at the end of the semester, you know, Walters will have graded all your labs and all that kind of stuff. And he'll give me a spreadsheet of all the lab results and your final grade in lab. And that right there is gonna count for 40% of your overall grade. So then the rest 60% comes from here. So how does that work? Well, first of all, we will have two exams. We'll have a midterm and a final. We're gonna talk about this. We'll, we're even gonna settle the date of the midterm as a group and possibly today, okay? Like you, there is no date for it yet, but, there, but we'll make one today. And we'll talk about that midterm and the midterm will be take home 
as will the final exam be. We'll talk about all that, but just know for the moment, you'll have a midterm and you'll have a final. And this is in the lecture portion of this class. You'll have, and I should say that the midterm and final will have portions of them that deal with the lab and everything. Like you don't get separate exams in the lab portion. You get your exams here. They test you on both parts. Um, if we put those two grades together, like, so right now, again, I'm trying to be clear. If we're talking about how you get a grade in my portion of the class, which is a good thing to know, right? At the end of the semester, I'll sit down. I'll have a midterm grade from you and I'll have a final grade from you. I'll average, and maybe each one of them might have had extra credit or something like that, but they will basically nonetheless be a raw score. To be honest, they'll probably be a very good score too if you do what you're supposed to in this class. Like they're not meant to be tricky, obnoxious exams. But you'll have those two scores. I'll do a regular everyday average, like arithmetic mean. I'll literally average the two scores. So now let's just say that you have an 80 and a 90. So I average them, you have an 85. That means right now, you, that means at that moment, you have your base average in the lecture portion of this class is an 85. But, so that's like your exam average in, in the lecture portion of this class. But then you have any and all of these homeworks that you will have turned in. All of the regular homeworks that look like physics that are about like a thing on a spring or the next homework will be about um, oscillations and the next one will be about waves, whatever. You'll have like physics homework Okay, and each one of those physics homework will be graded out of 50 points. And as hopefully you already saw, you're going to get all of those 50 points as long as you do everything clearly, even if you get wrong answers. But like the point of homework is to address everything thoroughly and clearly, and you'll get full points when you do that, right or wrong. Okay, so you have all these regular homeworks like that graded on a scale of 50. But then you have these a game homeworks, the most confusing thing in the class probably, but therefore worth explaining. You, all these, any homework, anything that's in your Google stream that's called a game turn one or a game turn two or anything like that that's called a game, what it is, first of all, just holistically again, is it's a way for you to turn whatever participation you do into points and technically, like the reason for the portal and the everything is technically what's happening is instead of me recording what you do every day, which would be impossible and unfair to everybody, what's happening is you're in effect record, you're making notes of your own class participation and turning them in as homework, which hopefully will just take you two seconds each time. But that way, whatever you're doing in the class for class participation is going to end up going into the big bucket of homework points. Like everything you do for regular homework or everything you record, you write down in these a game homeworks will all be as homework points. And I'm gonna tell you now how they affect your average, okay? But all of them together, the a game stuff and the regular homework stuff that all together becomes homework points that again, I'm about to explain what they do. But then after I explain what those points do, then I wanna specifically explain to you really what to do with these a uh, game assignments. You were right to answer the question, like today, there was only one due today, that's right. And in principle, there'll be at least one due every day. It's kind of like a daily, you know, it's like a weekly chore or whatever that is meant to take one minute. But technically you'll have, I mean, in principle, you'll have one of these a uh, game assignments for every class. Like you had turn one for the last class, but we did it right there in the class, I think. Then turn two for this class. Then you'll have turn three for the next, and all of them, what they are, um, um, they, they'll have dates on them, but that's just to help you keep track. It's like you could know what the assignment is in advance. You're just knowing in advance that after we finish every class, you have an opportunity to sit down for a minute and just remind me of some way that you participated. And then you'll get 50 points for that day if you, that will go into your bucket if you do that, if you don't do it, you won't get those points, but you won't be punished. I won't ever look for you. I won't look, I won't ever tell you, you owe me three of those assignments. It's not like that. The Anything that's called a game is partly called a game to emphasize that like, it's just for you to win. And it, um, it, you know, it's like extra credit that way. So yes, there was one due today. Um, and that, and what, what I was looking for today is just any reminder of any way you participated last time. Even if I already gave you points for that, I don't care. Um, I just want the habit. Um, it is an optional habit, but I want the habit. There will be special versions of 
a game that I'll explain, like it becomes gamey because there become other opportunities to get more points and stuff like that. But the base level of it is just like a weekly ritual where you just stop and reflect for a minute to just remind me of some way that you participated and then you'll get the points for that reminder. Um, um, but what was that, but, uh, but why this is, uh, oh, if you fall behind, if, uh, and, and it, you know, you're reminding me of something that I experienced. You're technically writing down on a piece of paper, I said hello to you today. Now, like I was there when you said hello. So you are just reminding me and, and I'm, I am gonna remember because I do have a memory. So it, it's really just a way of you making sure that you get points that you deserve by telling me like, it, um, so why I'm saying all that is, you know, all these lectures are recorded and the chat log is filed. So if I ever want, if we ever wanted to get into a zone where, what I'm trying to say is even if you fall behind, it you can like two weeks from now, sit down and fill out like, or if three weeks from now, if there's three classes you participated in, you remember, but you just never remember to fill out the forms, you can just fill them in all three at once as long as you're honest and like, tell me on each day what you did and just turn them in. I, you know, I don't mean it to be um, a rigid clock kind of thing, but it, it is what I do want everybody is to be in the habit of thinking that every time they participate, they could actually get explicit points for that. You will see that I will put in other things, other ways to participate that you'll get extra points for and you can double dip and things like that. But right now for the moment, right. Only one was due today. And it's like the one from last class. And technically speaking, there, you know, you never have to do any of them. If you got a hundred on both exams, you wouldn't care about any of this, maybe. Oh, uh, but that said, okay, so how do these points work? Sorry, I think I just lost you. Did I just lose you all? Wait, did I just lose? Uh, okay, and I know I'm talking, talking, talking. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Wait, okay, I am confusing people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm seeing, I, I, okay. Wait, I'm looking at, yes, yes, yes. No, you're right. Okay, okay. I, I forgot that I actually did, I, I did update your, there's a lot of these game things. In, okay, let me back up. Everything I'm saying is still true, but I, I, you're right. There's a bunch that I already put in there. So it really does warrant explanation. Okay, and, and, and I think, by the way, I have to admit right now, I think the numbering system already got a little bit confused and confusing. So I may change, I may renumber it to make it clearer, but right, you'll see that the, those, the game things are there, like game turn number one, we did together in the class, you all got 50 points. And then um, turn number, then turn number three, I know that's weird, but turn number three, if you look at it, it looks exactly like turn number one, like it's the same kind of assignment. And it, I think it's the one that was due today, it's 50 points. And, and that's the kind of thing that will be another one next week and another one next week, another one. But you're right. You also see these other two funky things, turn number two, which has a funny, it says like turn two in parentheses and then it says for right or for wrong. And that one, you're right, is due way at the end of May. There's a reason, I'll explain that. And then you also see like turn four or something says, or, or no, the other turn says like your best, which I may or may not have explained last time. I don't think I did. And that's due way in the end of May. What's going on there? Now, again, I apologize. I, the one that's called turn two, I probably shouldn't have used a number. That's probably confusing things and I'll probably fix that. But what I'm trying to say here is every class, it's not even a whole journal. It's even simpler than a journal. Like a, a, I'm not even asking you to keep, a, I mean, keeping a journal is a good thing, but I'm saying here that the, the first basic weekly ritual that we have, the 50 points, like turn one, turn three, turn five, turn is, I'm not even asking for a whole journal entry. I'm asking for like a one sentence, just reminder to me of some way that you participated in the class. I mean, I mean, I guess that is a journal entry, but I'm asking for something really quick. Like basically the idea is you do your job when you participate. You're now just reminding me that that happened so that we can document it and give points to you. Like, so, you know, ideally you shouldn't have to fully explain it. Like I'll know what you're talking about. Um, 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 but that's like the regular ritual of every week. What you also see there are a couple of game things that are due way at the end and more of those will accumulate. In general, those are like special buckets, like extra special buckets. For example, like today, anybody who wrote hello in the chat, even like right when I came on, if you wrote hello, like honestly, that counts. You can put that in 
as your turn three for today. You can literally write, I said hello in the chat, or you could take a screenshot <coughs> of it or whatever. And that counts for your points for today. And, and again, I'm not asking, it's not that you're on the defensive and you're being asked to prove that you participated. I'm not, it's not that at all. I'm just asking you to remind me. Like, I believe that you can prove it. I believe it is proven. I believe the minute you remind me, I'll know that it's true. And I believe that anybody who would start lying about this is making a big mistake. And like, definitely, it, that's, you don't want to start trying to fool me into thinking that you said things when you didn't, because it is all recorded and all that stuff. But anyway, so, so daily, I mean, weekly, you're going to turn those in. But then let's say, yeah, so today, anybody who just said hello, like is getting 50 points for that. And that's as it should be. And you can all get 50 points for that. And if that means you all end up with an A, I'm delighted and so are you. Like this is not a competition. This is just an attempt to make life better. Um, but what do I mean by like a game right or wrong? Well, that's a, now that's a more specific, more gutsy version of class participation that I want to reward extra. What I mean by, and this is important, it's like, I think this is worth talking about, like that turn number two thing that says for right or for wrong, what I'm asking there is that anytime any of you has the guts, has takes the initiative to, to assert something, whether with your voice or in the public chat or whatever, but if you assert something, like I think the answer to number four is 3.87 meters per second, okay? Or, or even, or if I'm like, does anybody have any ideas of how to do question number two? And someone says like, yes, my dog says that you should do F equals negative KX. Like you should start, we should start with F equals negative KX, okay? Now, like they, they quote their dog because, you know, you have to footnote so that no one thinks you're plagiarizing. Like that's important to give credit. I'm kidding. But, um, but like say someone says, okay, I think you should start with F equals negative KX, right? Now, first of all, it's gutsy to say anything, but it's particularly gutsy. Like, let's be honest. I mean, let's be real. Saying F equals negative KX, proposing that I do that is even gutsier than just saying hello. Why? Well, in some ways it is. Why? Because if you say hello, as hard as that is to say hello, I mean, I, I hope I'm not the kind of person that's ever going to go wrong, not hello, sorry, ha, ha, ha. like it was a trick. I don't even want to hear like, that's weird. Like you can't be wrong by saying hello. Maybe you could say good morning and then it's actually the afternoon, but I'm not going to be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. it was actually the afternoon. So you're wrong. Like that's ridiculous. You can't be wrong by saying hello. But if you say I did F equals negative KX, you're taking a risk. I might end up saying that's wrong. Like hopefully I'm polite about it, but like, or I might say, no, F doesn't equal negative KX. It equals one F KX or something. Like you, if you come out, so what I'm saying is this, if you come out and say something and ever in this class, or you put in the chat, anything that is subject to being right or wrong, like it's a claim, like if you assert something, that then whether I actually then say, yes, she's right, that's right. Or I say, no, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Either way, I think you should get points for the guts of how, like you didn't know whether it was gonna be right or wrong. And you put yourself out there to possibly be called wrong in public. I think we all have a hard time with that. I think it's tough to do that. I think being a science student makes it even tougher to do that because like you're used to a lot of classes where you get drill down for being wrong. So I, there's a specific, oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's fair. Oh, well, ha, okay, okay. Wait, oh, wait, okay, wait. So now, now wait, I'm good. To, I'm babbling back, but I'm, I'm seeing in the chat. So let me just catch my breath for a second to catch up with the chat here. Um, oh, right, okay. You, now this is great. Let me say, this is exactly an example. I love the dialogue that's happening here in the chat. Like. I really do. Like, even though some of it just seems to be agreeing with what I'm saying, as some seem like this is worth talking about. Like, like one person is. <laughs> Look, I think Kat has a point that is worth noting, and I think it's true for a lot of people. And I hope it ends up becoming true. Look, I hope we all end up losing our shame. That is maybe part of the goal of this class is to get us all to become as shameless as Kat is. I mean, she brings a freaking animal into the class. Obviously she's past shape. No, 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 no. No, but we do all I, I what what happened? Oh sorry. I lost it a long time ago. <laughs> Wait, the shame or the cat? Both. Oh, He's right. gone. <laughs> he walked away. <laughs> all right. Look, I, I totally admire like look again, 
we, I risk, I don't, I, potentially depending on personality, if I single anybody out too much, I could be embarrassing them. Hopefully Kat is telling me that she can handle that. And she's, and I have nothing embarrassing to say. Like, I like that Kat is putting herself out there here. Like, I don't want, I don't want her to look like a butt kisser and I don't want to kiss her butt or whatever. But I also don't want to shy away from trying to show examples to all of you of like, like what's good. It's good that she is being shameless. Like it's just helping this class move along. And I want to encourage all of you, like, like, to be willing to risk that. I, and so what I'm saying is, I think Jennifer also has a really good point in the chat. Like the, the honest, the reality is we all want to get past shame, we do. But I can say from experience that a ton of us have not in this department yet. It is very hard to participate. It, it's a lot for us, a lot of our guts and our risk um, taking gets squashed from time to time in this science department. And it's particularly hard on Zoom, I think, for many of us. And I keep saying us, not to be cheesy. I want you guys to know, you'll get to know me better. Like I know my physics at this point, or I mean, I feel confident of my physics at this level at this point, be but only because I've been doing it for so long. I mean, only because I have been wrong so many times in public and so embarrassed and have to work. And how do I learn my physics? I learn it by teaching. Like. I have to like, my motivation to learn is to not be publicly humiliated and not look like an ignoramus when I get up in front of you guys. Now, hopefully maybe I don't look that way these days, but I had to spend a lot of years looking that way to get here. And I know how rough it is. It's very embarrassing to be embarrassed. Um, <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay, oh, that's actually interesting. Okay, it's all Chad, wait, I don't even know what that means, but okay, thank you, I think. I won't worry, I don't even know what you, but, I'm just trying to say, I think one of my biggest philosophies is we advance in science by being willing to be wrong. Like science is experimental. We are here to play. We are here to play with the universe and then try to get wisdom from it by playing. Play means being, means not only being wrong a lot of times, but means not even caring about right or wrong a lot of the time until the rubber meets the road, like on exams and stuff like that. Of course, like we have to be right at some point. But to get there, we really have to be willing to be wrong in public, like really, really. And the older I get, the more I realize that that's actually a bigger problem for me, maybe than any of you. Like it's a huge problem for me. I can just hide it well here because I happen to know my physics, but you ask me something that I don't know and I, you'll see how badly it works out. Um, main character, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, science, right. I mean, look, if, if everybody does their job at, if you guys all do your job as majors in a hard major, I think we mentioned something, you're gonna get out of this major with actual real credibility and real jobs and real knowledge, unlike a lot of other majors in, in this school or other schools. Like we all know, you're here, when you guys stress, it's for a reason and you guys, and stress does tend to happen. And most of us, in order to get through this science department or any science department, in order to get through, we have to get broken down completely and built back up. It's exactly as someone just says, Veronica just said, that is how it works. And it's awful, but that's why when you, and like every one of us, every one of us is going to have a moment if we didn't already, at some point in our science major where we ask ourselves if it's really worth going on. Like, oh, oh, I don't know anybody who hasn't had a moment, a big moment where their life was in crisis. And they're like, I don't know if I can handle this anymore, or I could handle it, but I don't know if it's worth it because I'd be giving up so much. Everybody who's, who's left standing at the end of science has gone through that at some point, if not many times. And the one thing I'm always here to say, I just, I, maybe I say it too much, but the, the fact that some people do drop the program or get kicked out of the program, the fact that some people can't make it to the other side of that crisis is why for all the rest of us, if we just make it through, we have something really solid and worthy at the end. It's all about making it through. And a lot of that has to do with being willing to be wrong in public. Facts, right? Okay, okay. Huh. Whoa, whoa. Wait, I think I missed. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay. Now it's getting. Now it's getting heavy. Yeah. No, no, dude. I mean, seriously. Over the main goal in science is to get through those moments where you don't want to do science. I mean, it happens all the time. Because I mean, it really. And yeah, I've had some science professors in my time too. It's not always a pleasant experience. Um. I forget why I'm talking about, oh, but all of that is to say that in this context, um, oh, that that's what this whole game business is meant to be about. Like, 
like basically, for example, right now, I'm loving the fact that some of you do know how to participate, like you know how to talk, you know how to put videos or animals, that's great. But then there's some people in this class and sometimes this can be me, sometimes not. Some people in this class are totally listening right now, totally listening, totally ready to do whatever they're supposed to in this class, are, you know, want to get an A, are ready to do the homework, but they don't like talking and that's totally fine. Like there may be some people in this class who just for thousands of legitimate reasons don't feel like talking all the time. They feel like engaging in other ways. There may be other ways. Some of the, for example, some of those people might like occasionally um, like doing a screenshot of their notes or of their solution to the problem and posting it in the chat for us to talk about. Like they may not, but they might. Um, and what I want to say is anything like that, anything that ever occurs to me or anything that someone does that strikes me as, oh, that's a way of being alive in this class, I will immediately open up a portal, an assignment portal in the game section. And I'll immediately say like, okay, 50 points. And I'll give some cutesy dumb title or something. And I'll say like, from now on, anybody who puts a screenshot in the chat, 50 points for that. Like I might only think of it because someone just did it. But then I'm basically telling you all, all right, that person's going to get 50 points for that. And all the rest of you can get 50 points anytime you do that. Any way that we can think of to like be human and alive and engaged or whatever, but, but public, any way you can think of or comes up, I want to make an extra portal for that. It's just like a way to get points. Private chat is a little trickier because I'm not sure that helps the whole class, but we can talk about, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, it, it actually does, but it's a little trickier, but um. But so any moment that you have a suggestion, like if you want to private chat me something like, professor, could we get points if we, I don't know, if we um, screen share or like something that I haven't thought of, you could just ask me privately and I'll probably say yes. And then just make that available to everybody. So any game portal, any game portal that opens up that has a funky title or where the points are due all the way at the end of the semester, that's just a way of saying, here's an extra way you can get points and it is to say you can double dip. Like for example, today, if someone actually, and I know we should start talking soon, but if someone today put in the chat or said like, I think the answer is F equals negative KX, right? What I'm literally telling that person is they can write that down, you know, remind me that that's, they said F equals negative KX. They could submit it once for their regular participation for today and get 50 points. And they can also submit that into the portal that says, for right or wrong, because it meets that description. And so you can and should double dip. You can get points for what whatever applies. I, I kind of, what I'm trying to say to everybody is any assignment that says a game, just like don't get bogged down in the dates, but just look at it and see if it applies to anything you remember doing like ever in the class. And if it applies, submit it. Um, and if you can submit a million of them, then that's a million points. Oh, and what I still haven't explained. So what happens to all these points once you get them? What, but oh, so again, so technically, you know, you have the game. So really you should think of it as you have like one to think about for today. Like, did you participate today? If so, just fill out a quick one on that. And then the other ones are special versions of participation. You just ask yourself if you did, then fill them out. Um, but what happens to all these points? I have, it's in the syllabus, but let me explain. At the, at the end of the semester, hopefully each one of you will have done a lot of these. Like, like every class period, we have, we have, to have, like, we have like 30 class periods. Wait, sorry. No, no, no. We have like 15 class. Yeah, we have like 15 class periods, right? So right away, that's 15 times 50. Um, that, that's like 750 points, right? If you every single day came to class, participated, you would automatically accumulate, and you kept records, you would accumulate like 750 points right there. Then plus there's these extra portals like for right or for wrong or your best and stuff, extra points there. So say this semester ends, you now have an exam average of let's say 85 from your two exams. And now you have, let's say like, like 800, I'm just making up, 800 of these participation and homework points like sitting there in, in your file. What do I do with those? It's actually very simple. What, what Joe and I, what Walters and I do every semester at the end, we come up with one number to divide a scaling factor, a weighting factor to divide, well, no, a scaling factor to divide your 800 points by. So like, say this semester, we come up with a number, um, say, say we come up with a number 80. And I'll tell you how we do that in a minute, but say the number for this semester is 80. 
the, the, the scaling factor. Well, that number, I can't tell you now because it's different every semester, but it is definitely the same for all students. So say at the end of the semester, the number is 80. That would mean if you have 800 of these extra points, you're going to divide the 800 by 80, or I am. I mean, this is all how we do the calculation. I would take your 800. I would divide the 800 by um, 80, and I get 10. What does that mean? That means I'm going to add 10, literally all 10 points to your average. If your test average was an 85, your average is now a 95. Um, again, like it would be 10 points in your case if you had whoever you are, if you have like 800 of these things accumulated, if your friend, oh, you know, only came to some classes or blah, 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 and they only have 700 points accumulated. Okay, well, then they're still being divided by 80. So they'll have less than 10 points added there. They'll have like in whatever, seven points added. Um, but the dividing factor is the same for everybody. And is my example realistic at all? Yes. At the end, when I take all your points from homework, from homework of both kinds, regular homework, and these game things, which I hope if you're hearing me, you're realizing it's very easy to, I hope, to fill out these game things. Like what you're talking about, like a minute of just remembering something you did in class. If you add up all those points together and then I scale them down by a factor, an appropriate factor at the end of the semester, on average, people do usually end up getting like, any, like nine to 12 points to add to their test average to make their average in the class. It's designed to make that big of a difference. The system is designed so that you could change your grade by like three half letter grades by virtue of homework alone. I, I shouldn't even say change your grade. What we're trying to say is participating in doing homework is that important to us that if you, if you ace your exams, okay, you don't have to worry about it. But if you don't ace your exams, there's a huge cushion there to allow a lot of people to, to, to be blunt, to get A's even if they never got A's on exams. Um, um, that's the idea. And, and uh, you know, you can be fluid about the deadlines of those, but they pile up. So it's just worth keeping track of them. So anytime I come up with an extra special one, like a game for right or wrong, or a game post a screenshot or whatever, those will tend to all be due at the end, just to let you know, like you could just keep waiting until you do that special thing and then fill it out. Um, and finally, finally, there's the one that I put in your, this is maybe the most important, I'm sorry to talk so much and I gotta take a breath, but wait, could you, okay. Um, the one that says, and this may, I should almost pause it. This is almost the most important out of all of them. There's one that says a game your best. Like I put that in right at the beginning. It's not due till the end, but what's the deal with that? That may be the most important thing of all. What you're gonna do with that, actually, I'm even gonna pause for a second. Can I just get a show of hands if you're still like, listen, if you, if you hear me, if you know that I'm about to explain a game your best, like whether you understand that, if you, if you hear me right now and you know that that's what I'm about to explain a game your best, could you do, thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, anybody. Thank you, Veronica. So I'm just making sure everybody's with me because this is important. Um, I hear, oh, cool, cool. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Jasmine. So, okay, thank you, Ain. Thank you, Lars. You see, I'm, I'm forcing myself so hard to enjoy this so much because it's so, okay, yes, sir. Ooh, sir. Hey, all right. Only my father is sir. Okay, in reaction. In reactions, yes. Oh, yeah, you could do it in reaction. Right, right. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Thank you. Yes, you go to reactions, right. Okay. So if you're all hearing me now, which it sounds like you are, and I appreciate it. Um, uh, 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 the business with a game, your best, this is like the best thing. I'm, I, maybe I just want you to because I'm proud of it. I don't know. But here's the deal with that. <clears throat> that is the portal where literally, yes, you, you use that to direct my attention so that the grading I do is as much to your benefit as possible. Like you're going to use that as the blatant, like that's where you are going to manipulate me into giving yourself the best shot at the best grade possible. What I mean by that is this. I say that you have two exams in the class and that they're they're not actually curved usually. Um, the way, you know, they're not curved. They're usually a raw score each, but you know, and we don't drop one of them or so, because there's only two. But I do recognize that people have good days and bad days and all that kind of stuff. And people have different rhythms. So let's say you're rocking this class, you're rocking this class. We get to the midterm and you're like, no problem. You're totally on it. You rock the midterm and either you know that for a fact because I give it back to you or even before you get it back, you just know you rocked it, right? What I would do, uh, well, so let's say you get it back. 
um, put your midterm in that portal. This is just an example. It could be a homework. It doesn't have to be your midterm. But if you rock the midterm, like put the midterm in that portal, right? And what you're doing by doing that is you're saying like, especially if you're anticipating that things are going to go badly now for like a family thing is happening or something. And you're, you, you just don't feel like you're going to replicate that on the final exam. Or as we get close to the final exam, you're nervous about the final exam. Put your midterm in that portal. And, what, and leave it there, especially after you take your final exam. Let's say you think you flub the final exam or something. And of course, then there's not a lot of turnaround time then, like the class pretty much ends. So you put your midterm in this portal. What you're telling me is, that's my best work. If you, if you have, you're telling me, if I, Yaverbaum, have limited time to, to grade or judge, or if I have to be fast or something like that, that is what you want me to see first. Like that's the, the impression that you want to have in my mind. If even God forbid, now I go to start looking at your final and your final's looking bad or something like that. You're telling me in advance that psychologically you'd rather your, your midterm represent you than your final. Am I now, am I literally now promising that I'm going to like drop your final? No, I'm not literally promising that, but I am telling you that I'm, I have to cut corners just as much as you guys. Sometimes I have to triage and like, I have to look at the best way and the fastest way to do things sometimes. I want you guys to be represented. I want to give you a grade that captures you at your best, not you at your worst or you even at your average. So if you tell me where your best is at all times, I will look there first and I will construct a grade from that first. And yeah, I'll factor in the other things too, as I'm supposed to and all that. But if push comes to shove, if either I have to like make a borderline judgment case in your case or or I have to get my grades done faster and I have to be more superficial about a document, I'll be more superficial in my grading of your bad document than I will in your good document. Basically, you tell me where you want me to take you the most seriously. And that's what I'll do for the sake of both of us. Um, does that make? Oh, that's a good question. No, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, if it comes to something that's, um, I mean, ideally, I mean, that's a really good question. Ideally, you're actually not just putting your grade, you're putting the thing itself. Um, I mean, if it's something as clear and straightforward as midterm, you got a 96, then sure, it's not, that's not a big deal. But like in some people's cases, this might be a little trickier. Like for example, you might do bad on the midterm and you might not be nervous about the class or something. What I'd, but if you ever rocked even one homework or, like if you really did go to town or you're now getting nervous, so you want to try and explicitly show that you really know the material that we're doing right now. So you go overboard and you do attempt to rock a homework or something, or you attempt to rock a class and then you screenshot it. Like for some of you, the, the truth of the matter is you might be nervous about your tests. So what I'm saying is you could put anything in this portal. You basically put some indication of your best day or your best work or just the thing that you would just like me to judge you on first and foremost. So in some cases, for some of you, you may want to like, and you want to make my life easy, right? You're basically saying to me, dude, Yaverbaum, if you're running out of time and you, and you want a way to give me an A, here's the way, right? And that's kind of what I am saying is like, I'd like you guys to get A's, but I'd like it to be for fair reason that I can defend to my God and my department chair and all that. So what I need is a reason. So what you're doing is you're telling me like you'll put something in there and it might be the actual work. Like don't make it hard. Don't say like, remember that time that I did good homework because then I have to go find that homework and now it's making life difficult. So just whatever your best thing is at any given, and you could start like right now if we've done one homework and that's all we've done. So you, and you got a hundred, I mean, you got a 50, put the freaking homework in there if you want, just because right now that's your best and that's the best it could be. But it's just a way of, so just imagine me trying to calculate grades under the gun when they're due and I have to move fast and I want you to have good grades, but I want there to be a legitimate reason. I don't want to be making up grades for you or whatever. So you're just streamlining the system and you're putting your best work in there at any given moment and you can shift it around, you can take it out and put back, you know, that's just for you to manipulate to show me what you consider to be your best work. It doesn't mean your whole grade will just be based on that, but it means that that will heavily influence your grade. Like I'm telling you that I'd rather judge people on their best than on, and, oh, and I'm also telling you all, one thing I've learned as a teacher for a long and a professor is grades have to be fair and all of that. But what fairness means is that everybody has to be treated with the same policy. Um, and, and everybody knows that your grade is supposed to be an average. Like everybody knows that the unfair thing is you do different things on different days, but then you get this one number that represents 
your whole semester, right? And that happens in each class. It's just a system that we've all sort of agreed to call fair. But here's the thing, even if we're all agreeing that it's fair to have a whole semester of work encapsulated by one number, even if we all agree that that's fair, and even if we all believe in averages, which we do, the truth is all scientists and mathematicians know that there's a million different ways to compute an average and that an average could mean a middle, but it doesn't have to mean. And even when you wanna represent a whole set of numbers with one number, there's no law that says it has to be the middle number. There's a law that says we have to treat you all the same and fairly, but there's no law that says you have to be judged by your most average uninteresting day of your life. Like what kind of law is that? As far as I'm concerned, you should be judged by your best day. And then it should be up to your, you know, your family to worry about you on your worst days, like not me, if that makes any sense. Um, so, so yes, yes. So, so, so to Skyla's question and Kat's question. So first of all, yes, ideally you'd put the actual work in there, not just the grade, but yes, unsubmit and resubmit. Like in that portal that says your best, right. That is like, you want at all times for there to be just one thing in there that, so yeah, like put in your best for now. And then when you do something better later on, take out the old and put in the new. You're, you literally think of that as your, like that's the first place I'm gonna look when I go to grades at the end. And it's just your opportunity to hit me over the head with one simple thing that will make it simple and easy for you to get a good grade. Again, it's not a promise that that will be your whole grade but it is a promise that that is the first place I'll look and that I don't want to work harder on this than you do. Um, so yes, unsubmit and submit, like don't have a million things in there, have one thing. Um, okay, does this make, okay, I'm gonna pause for a second, does this make, oh, thank you, Quasi, I saw that, thank you, Quasi. Okay, all right, so this is, now I know I'm bored, all right. So I think, okay, I'm gonna pause. I think we're gonna start doing physics now. Actually, okay, I'm gonna take a quick 30 second break just, well, I take 30 seconds, see if you have any other questions that I haven't answered, or you take a break. We'll just like, take a clear the brain break for a second and then we'll do material. But if there are more questions, we'll do those. Um, yeah, I'm gonna walk away for like, I'm gonna use the restroom. So feel free to do the same thing. <laughs> God, five clear fries spec. Wow. I'm okay. Right. I like five guys too. Um, wait, not gonna lie, not gonna lie, right? Okay. Oh oh, but I'm uh, sorry. I mean, Shake doesn't Shake Shack just win on every I mean, isn't that like like unfair to even yeah, I mean, of course. Yes. Okay, veggie burger. Yes, no, that's probably true too. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, actually, that is good. Yeah, okay. This one, all right, God, I can't believe I'm. All right. Um, uh, 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 uh. Yes. So I think we're gonna. You can keep talking about that. I'm gonna turn my attention to the spring business. Oh no! Wait, there's one more. Here's a good. You want to stall me out of doing physics? Here's a best way. Can I get from anybody? Maybe particularly someone who hasn't participated yet, if they want. Can anybody give me a quick summary or rundown of what you feel happened in lab? Uh, with Walters last, like you've had one Walters class so far, right? Wait, yeah. So, um, and I believe I know what's supposed to have happened there, but does anybody want to give me a quick rundown of what they feel happened in lab on last Wednesday so that I don't um, waste your time? I mean, you did have, you had lab last Wednesday, yes? Oh, we did about, oh, oh. Oh, 
thank you. I'm glad I asked. That's, oh. <laughs> oh, whoa. Whoa. Wait, this is very helpful. I'm again, you might feel like this is easier to talk or more fun to talk about than actual physics, but this is important and helpful to me. So wait a sec. Especially because you know, we have to keep changing things around and the I mean in COVID and all that. So whoa. Okay, wait. So let's talk about this. First of all, the buggy lab. Interesting. Um, and you had to run trials to find the line of best fit. So okay, and it was and it was clear to you guys. I mean, this is a question. Is it clear to you guys that I mean, it sounds like it was clear, but you were doing the buggy lab and doing all that to like warm, to establish methods and ways of the class, but like the actual physics content, you you weren't like, what I'm, you didn't know it hit him. Okay, oh, in his words, we beat it. Wow, then I really do need to hear about this because this is unusual because that dude does not matter. Okay, wait, all right, as long as we're, he was trying to get a feel for how the class will run. Yeah, fair enough. I want to hear about this because I will, let me tell you again, I might've mentioned this. This particular class, 102, Walters and I have been teaching together for a while. And we, it's usually one of the favorite things we do. We really do love this class usually. I mean, we, um, I mean the material, you know, but the, the group is different, of course, every semester and some often the group and this group right now, you guys do seem quite cool. I mean, to be blunt, uh, um, we, but we've had, but uh, last semester the group was very very small and and kind of asleep the entire time. So I'm not surprised at all that he was trying to get a feel for this group um, in the hopes that you guys would be more like what we've been used to in the past. And it seems like you are. And but you're a very big group. But now that said, and and yes, there is a whole element of this class we haven't talked to you about yet. There is a whole element of this class where we do try to relate everything to court ultimately we um we haven't spoken about that yet but there is an underlying sort of court themes this class just because we're at john jay and we thought that would be valuable and fun and so if all of a sudden there was some sort of trial feeling last semester i mean last week i totally do want to hear about this uh and yeah he doesn't play i mean yeah maybe if anybody wants to with voice could you oh well here we go okay let me see Oh, okay. Oh, oh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, and I'm glad it was fun. Yes, so he dove right into, well, this is good. I mean, yes, we do try, again, he may not have explained, but it's not a coincidence that he sort of made you into a trial with him. We, that is a part of this class. I didn't know he was gonna do that that fast the first day. And we don't usually, we didn't used to do that, but that's great. Um. And if he's telling you that you, I mean, he's not being polite. Like I, like I said, that dude likes to win, does not like to lose and does not easily admit when he's cool. Yeah, he does like to win. But one thing you're, yeah. And he always, and he's also a major gamer. If I'm not giving anything away by saying that, I don't know how many of you are. Um, and I never was until I, met him and had my second son, like my older son is a big gamer in a way. And I was not a good parent about it at the time, but I love games. Now. I mean, video games. I love them now, sort of thanks to Walters and thanks to my second son. But, um, oh yes, he, dude, uh, good luck. I wasn't going to say it, but, and I don't want to alienate people who are not into this thing, but good luck playing him in Smash Brothers. Really. I'm, my, I'm with you. Godspeed. I want to hear about it, but I, good luck beating him in Smash Brothers is all I have to say. Um, I, you would beat me in a minute. I know that, but uh, what's Lou? I don't even know what Lou is. What is Lou? Is that, uh, oh, I think I've heard of that. I don't know that. I might look into that. Um, it's probably too violent for me, but oh, I should. Okay, we're, we're totally gonna get off the topic now. This is dangerous. Um, oh my God. All right, all right, all right. Hey, okay. This is a, yes, game, we will, but we do like to argue. We, I mean, Walters and I feel very, I mean, this is also a part of the philosophy, whatever. We do think science class should be a place where there's debate and argument because that is what science is actually about, but it never feels that way in high school. It didn't to me in high school or in a lot of my college classes. No, we are about argument and discussion here. I'm amazed if you won in an argument about that equation because that equation seems sort of straightforward to me, but great. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, 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 so, so is it clear though that that equation, when you, you, I think you are making this clear to me, but it's clear to you guys that that equation was, was 
meant to be like a one-on-one type, like you, that's not like, you know, we, we were gonna get into more, that's old material, that's clear, right? Like the, the point of that class was not to teach you that equation. It was to practice these methods and get to know each other. That, that's clear to people, right? Like, like the first equation of this class to be as honest, the first equation of this class, all right, I, we're gonna start talking about this. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um. Okay, let me, this is a little bit of a pun or whatever. So, um, okay, physics in general is about motion. I think you guys know that, but phys physics really is about motion. It's literally about stuff in space and time, right? Everything in physics is about where something will be when. Like, it's like given some point of mass at this point, given some point of mass, which is at this point in time, in this point at space, at what point in space will that point of mass be at such and such time later? Like the, actually all of physics comes down to one version or another of that question. Everything in physics is point of mass in some point in space at some point in time. And then we have to predict where it's gonna be at some future point in time, or we predict how much time it's gonna take for it to be at some other location, or as in John Jay, as in forensic physics, in forensic science, perhaps we retrodict, we decide where the mass was five minutes ago. Like for example, if it's a bullet that is right now in a body, we try to figure out five minutes ago, what location was the bullet in, as in where was the gun or some, and thereby solve a crime, right? But all of physics, whether you're predicting the future or you're retrodicting the past, all of physics is always points of mass, in points of time at points of space. Um, physics is about motion in that sense. Okay, and, and physics has a lot of equations and stuff like that. But however, what you also know, there's another meaning of that word motion, right? Like in a courtroom, um, which is, you know, another big part of our life context here, in a courtroom, as I think you're aware, like lawyers, stand up and advance or make or claim or state motions. Like everything is a, a motion is a gesture in a courtroom or a motion is an event at a moment where, where generally a, one attorney is stating something like proposing something and then it's either gonna be accepted or rejected like a motion you know, to, to, uh, to, to postpone the trial three weeks or a motion to accept a certain evidence or a motion not to accept certain evidence, but a motion is like a proposal or a gesture that is supposed to advance proceedings in a courtroom, but then is either accepted or rejected, right? What we do in this class is proceed in that way. We proceed from statement to, st particularly in lab, what we're gonna do is proceed from statement to statement to statement of, of, of physics content. And it's gonna be our job at every moment to sort of accept or reject the statements. Like that's what he was having you do yesterday. That's like totally is what we like to do here. Um, but the reason we call them motions and stuff and try to sort of model it after a courtroom is that, that, um, oops, sorry, that in a courtroom on the one end, it's true that every motion is put forth to either be accepted or rejected. That either, 
that is it's either accepted as true or false. And this is similar to in science where each next statement, whether it's an equation or observation or a recording of data, each next statement is subject to either being accepted as true or false. Nothing in between and no combination of both, but statements in science are supposed to be regarded as true or false. Now one problem, oh, oh sorry. So, um, but each statement, once it's accepted as true, is supposed to advance us forward, just like in a courtroom, right? So this is a long way of saying that one of the reasons you haven't gotten your calendar of topics yet is we, um, is that this is a very act, it become it plays a couple of roles in this class, the calendar of topics. We're not, we don't just navigate through topics here. What we're doing is it going to advance from one statement to the next, to the next, to the next. We're building a pile of ultimately like 10 statements. It's not that many, it's like 10 or 15. And these statements more or less look like equations, but equations are statements, like they are propositions. And in this class, I'm about to write this down, you'll see what I'm saying, but in this class, we'll propose one motion or statement. And once it's established, we'll go to the next, but the next is only possible because of the one before it. And the one after that is only possible because of the one before it. And when we're done in this class with, the, with having, a, after we establish about 15 deliberate specific statements that are each built on the last, then actually what we'll hopefully have at the end of the class is a proof. Like each topic is actually a statement in a long argument that this class is designed to make. Uh, I'm, I'm getting abstract here, I know, but, um, the, but, but the, um, like the first statement of this class that we're gonna be investigating is this business of F equals negative KX. You'll look at that in the next lab. Um, and we started using it in the homework. F equals negative KX is a, an example of a statement. It's an equation, but it's a statement. It says like force is directly proportional to displacement or something like that. And in this class, we consider it a motion because we're putting it forth. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna test whether it's true or false in the lab. You're gonna establish for yourself whether you believe it or not. But once we say we believe F equals negative KX, then we'll go on to another one, like from that and pile it on that. And what you're gonna see by the end, not to, um, what we're trying to prove by the end is why we believe the universe is expanding. Um, not to give anything away, but just so you see the structure of the class. In other words, wait. Okay, when we say motion in this class, we specifically mean like a statement or a claim or a proposition or ultimately what's often looks like an equation. I mean, an equation is just a symbolic way of capturing a statement or a proposition or a claim. But what we mean by statement or proposition or claim or equation or, or, um, or, or motion, all the, what, they, what all these words have in common, what they all are, Okay, a motion is a complete thought. Uh, an equation necessarily is a complete thought. A sentence is a complete thought. What I really mean ultimately is 
something that has a verb and a noun in it or a subject and a predicate. Now, and equations count as this. All equations have subjects and predicates or nouns and verbs, if you like. It's just that in all equations, the verb always is, is equal to. Like it's like always the same verb, which actually makes them easier to navigate ultimately than the English language. But every single equation is saying like something is equal to something else. It's making a statement about the world, a complete thought. Um, and by being a complete thought, like, like every equation is either true or false. It's not both and it's not neither. I'm not saying that we always know. Like we might spend our whole lives not knowing if a certain equation is right or wrong. Like we might even debate about it and never resolve it. But when we debate about an equation, the reason we're debating is because of the assumption that in the end of the day, it either is or it isn't true. It's not both and it's not neither. I have to say all of this because not everything in life is this way. Like hello is not, well, hello is like, like, like chair is not a complete sentence. It's not a motion. It's not an equation, right? Like nobody can ever propose chair, like the word chair. You can't just like say chair in the middle of a courtroom or in the middle of a physics class. Now, no one ever would, like it sounds silly, like why would you even think that? But if you really think about what happens on a lot of exams and a lot of homeworks, a lot of times people write a lot of stuff that looks like math or science to them, but really is gibberish because they'll write, like they'll, they'll just write fragments and thoughts, like they'll write a velocity, but they won't say velocity equals blah, 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 or something, or they'll, like it's very easy if you, it's very easy if you get intimidated by the symbols of math or physics to start thinking that it's all just black magic and all just made up and just start memorizing things and like and lose sight of the fact that we actually are attempting to make sense when we write down math statements and, and science statements so that at all times, first and foremost, what you wanna make sure to be thinking about or writing down is actual full statements that could either be true or false, even if you don't know which one it is, but you always want to be working with statements that have truth value, that are either true or false. Now we're going to derive about 10 of them in this class. The first one will be F equals negative KX. Like you're going to have to assess in the lab whether you really think it's right or wrong, but I've kind of already accidentally given away that it's kind of right because like we're using it. You'll get other equations where you won't know if it's right or wrong when, he, when Walters first proposes them to you. Like that's what he's trying to get you used to. Each lab, he's going to propose a couple things to you that the purpose of, like he'll give you direction. Here's, he's going to say, today's lab, you're going to prove whether this, like, like he did, like you're going to prove whether this motion is true or false. So you don't, so you have to actually find out whether you think it's true or false. You won't be directionless because you'll know what you're focusing on. But, but once we establish each thing is true, it will, it, um, it will um, build towards the next thing. And in the end, I'm telling you right now what your final exam is going to be that you put together, that you show how these 10, equations are these 10 main things that we learned, how if you string them together in a certain order that you can't help, that, and if you understand each one of them and believe each one of them, and hopefully that's what you go through the lab to do to convince yourself whether you believe in them or not. But by the end of this course, once you've had these 10 or so statements written down, the first of which is F equals negative KX, at the end, it's an argument for why we believe that the universe is expanding which is a, a nice thing to know. I, I mean, you hear about it all the time, but like no one in the real world actually knows why physicists say this, but we do, we believe the, un and when I say the universe is expanding, by the way, that's a pretty heavy, weird idea. What I mean, I don't just mean that the planets and stars within the space of the universe are getting farther and farther away from each other. I mean, I am saying that, but I'm saying something more than that. I'm saying that the total amount of space and time in the universe is getting larger and larger as time and time progresses. And that's such a weird thing to say, even when I say it, I'm not even fully sure what I mean. But we do believe as physicists that the universe is perpetually expanding. And the reason we believe that is this course. Like I can't, I won't even try to explain in one minute right now why we believe that, but everything we're doing this course is to lead to that conclusion. Um, and each step along the way is like an argument or a trial so that by the end, if you see that, so that hopefully by the end, you have an opportunity to actually believe that or reject it. If you don't like the arguments by the end of this course, you'll write a final exam. You might very well at the end of this course say, I now see everything. I see why physicists believe that the universe is expanding. And actually, I think it's a, like a load of crap. Like I totally don't buy it. And that'll be your prerogative, but at least you'll know what you're not buying. Like, and you know, and that, that's why you do this with, with Walters this way. Like, 
And there's more to say about that, but that's the context of this class is it is kind of a courtroom in that way, especially the labs. And each equation or statement we do, we call a motion as though we would in a courtroom. That's what's going on there. Sorry to say so long on that. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, Walters, right. Um, okay. Uh, and, you know, well, yeah, he's a smart guy. Um, all right. So I think I'm going to turn to the thing on the spring homework. Let's turn to it. Oh wait, oh we did, I'm sorry, we, we did start talking about it, right? We oh yeah. So let so I'm now I'm turning to where we were last week. I, and stop me if we I believe last week we 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 set it up, we went, we said this. Yes, I'm just reviewing what we did last week. Um wait, we, we actually got far left. All right. Stop me. I'm gonna I'm just flipping through here in front of oh we left off at four, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh and does that mean so that's where I'm gonna pick up now. Does that mean, just I'm just flipping this for every, my sake and everybody's, if we're up to, oh yes. Okay, right, four. Is everybody fine with everything that happened before four? Like one, two, three? Okay, cool. Like I'm happy to pick up, yes. Okay, okay, cool, okay. All right, so here we are at four. Um, right. Oh yeah, so I use triple equal sign to mean equal by definition. And I'm saying from now on, okay, Total I use E to mean total mechanical energy. That means all the kinetic and all the potential at, of any system at any given place. Right, I said that, okay. Again, I'm flipping fast because we already said this, but stop me if it's, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So we really did, so wait, we went to, uh, is I, it looks like we did, is there anything I should say about, are we fine on four? Like, should I go, it looks like we did four, but if there's no, if you're now for caught up mentally, okay, so I'm gonna go, cool. All right, so I'm gonna go to five, all right. Now, now I'll say this right, five, it's, it's possible to do five. Oh, and I guess you got this back already. Oh yeah, a lot of you saw, a lot of you did make a mistake in five. It is worth going over. It is to be done the same way as four if you actually did four, like you should start the same way you started four if you really started four properly. But this is a, this, but this five is sort of there to trap people who were a little bit careless about number four. In other words, five, so first of all, what was the question? The question was assume, Right, this is the question of, and this is how I would expect you to do it in your homework. Like you've already made a whole diagram. So now you could just jot down like, okay, we're assuming that V instantaneous velocity equals three meters per second. So it, given that instantaneous velocity, what is the position at which we would find the mass? Okay, so how do I start this? I'm gonna say the same thing as before. Energy is still conserved. So just like before I say EA equals EB a and B are two different locations. A and B, they don't have to be the same locations as last time. What A and B always mean is it's one location that you know that you have information about, i.e. you know how fast the thing is going. And the other location is what you're solving for. So one location that, where you know the speed and the other location where you're solving for the speed. Well, so, so I'll say, sorry, so, so I'll say, let A be some location that I know something about. Well, I actually have two choices at this point. I know what's going on at X equals 15 centimeters because we were told that right at the beginning of the problem. But then I also solved something about the equilibrium in question three, four. So I, for the space that I know something about, I could choose either one. It'll be fine either way, the equilibrium or the, the, the 15 centimeter position. I think I'll just go with the equilibrium because it's, to me easier, but it doesn't matter either way. So let, well, sorry. So let A equal, um, so let A be where X equals zero, like equilibrium. And let B stand for 
uh, the x that we're solving for, right? That's and that's what. So if that's the case, I'm going to say. Now notice this at the risk of insulting anybody or or boring or condescending. Notice this, this is what I consider really, I've said everything up here, but this is my statement of truth. Like energy is conserved means total amount of energy at one spot equals total amount of energy at the other spot. That's what I'm starting with. Like notice I'm not writing down one F MV squared equals one F K X squared. Like that's a lot of people, that's their instinct to write down one F MV squared equals one F K X squared, especially since it seems like that's what we used in question four. But we found that out in question four for that specific situation. Like what's true always is that total kinetic, I mean, the total energy over here equals total energy over there. So now, so like this is my statement of truth. I'll expand it slightly. Sorry, I'll expand it slightly. Like in other words, I'm saying this. Like all of that at A equals all of that at B. This is still the same way I was doing question four because I'm starting them both off with a statement of general truth that energy is conserved and this is what that means. But then for, but I apply it now to the particular situation. I'm going to go to the next page. Tell me if you want me to go back. Sorry. And in fact, I'm just going to recopy. This is just to recopy the first thing. So I have this so far. Okay, and now I'm remembering my definitions of A and B. Like A is A meant where X equals zero. So I can right away say, ah, okay, like that is zero um, at place A, like X equals zero. So at point A equilibrium, there's kinetic energy, but no potential energy, okay. But now at point B, the place that I'm looking for, Remember, V has been specified to be three. So there definitely is V there. Well, let me put it another way. X at the other spot that I'm looking for, I don't know what it is. I'm solving for X. I don't know what it is, but it ain't zero. Like that's why I'm solving for it. Like I, it's, I, I don't, if I knew it was already zero, I wouldn't be solving for it. It's not zero, it's something else. But similarly, V is also not zero because we're solving for the X where V is supposed to be three meters per second. So in other words, we don't want to just say one F MV squared equals one F K X squared here. Like that's the mistake people make because they memorize that thinking it's some kind of equation. It isn't some kind of equation. It's some kind of result of an equation under certain circumstances. Here, in other words, what we're, the correct thing to do here is to say, And you know, I do have a one F MV squared on both sides, but I can't just subtract them because it's two different Vs, right? Like that's why I have the parentheses and the A and the B and all that. What I can do, however, is factor one half from each side, just like we did in question four. Like the one halves can go away because there is one in every single term. So that that's nice. So I can do that. And again, it looks like you might be tempted to divide out by an M or something, but oops, sorry. But you can't divide out by an M because, because you can't factor out an M because there isn't one in every single term. Um, so, um, so what do I have now? MV squared A equals MV squared plus KX squared B. Now, what am I solving for again? Remember, I'm solving for X. So like right here, this is a, you could plug in numbers right now and people will. My advice, especially if you're trying to get better in physics or better in science, or follow this class, I am not going to plug in numbers until the last moment. I, I always postpone the numbers until the last possible moment because everything up until the numbers is true physics. I'm finding out something about physics in general. Once I plug in the numbers, those are that's just the data for this particular physics situation. It's not actually telling me anything about the world. Um, and I can always make a mistake with numbers. And I'd rather not have that mistake bleed through all of my physics. So I postpone the numerical stuff as much as I can. And I say here, and I solve, I rearrange algebraically to solve for what I'm looking for. I know this is also boring for some, I'm sorry. I know this is obvious for some people, but you never know. Um, so I'm gonna say um, kx squared uh, equals 
mv squared a minus mv squared b. Right, I'm just rearranging. And now I'm saying, right, now this is starting to look complicated here. It may bum you out, some of you, that I'm not plugging numbers. Like, it would sure look simpler if I plug numbers, but this way I can see I can see what physics I'm saying. And the more I get used to writing things this way, also the more I can look at this and think about units and whether the units make sense or not. Like, I can act, but we'll get to that. Um, but this is what I have so far. I still cannot, do not cancel out those Ms, right? Because there's, I can't factor that because there is no M in the denominator or anything. But now I finally, oh, well, and one more step off the square root both sides. Oh, one second, I'm sorry, there's somebody, uh, pardon me, hold on. Coming, coming. Huh. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm very tempted by this chat. Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't even get me start. Uh, well, it's very hard for me to resist talk in, involving myself in this chat, but thank you. Uh, believe me, for your pet. <laughs> um, yeah, don't get me. I, you be careful what you wish for because either me or my can. I'll I'll be. I'll, you're you're gonna find me in your Minecraft realm. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's not even go there yet. Uh, um, and okay, anyway, um, but you know, by the way, if those of you who play, if anybody ever plays Animal Crossing, this whole idea of the game turn one, game turn two, whatever, that's totally just based on Nook Miles, if you know what I'm talking, I mean, you may not know what I'm talking about, but it's the same idea as Nook Miles, which is just getting rewards for freaking anything and everything, like, and including getting rewards for getting rewards. Like I, I totally, the game thing comes from the Nook Miles idea for whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And if you're talking about Tom Nook, we'll talk about that. The don't, by the way, you want to get Walter Star. I used to hate, I, I used to hate Tom Nook so much until Joe Walters was like, you know, he doesn't, he does give interest-free loans. You gotta, I mean, he put a whole, I don't know, don't get it. You can, you can get into an argument with Walters about Tom Nook and see what, who ends up winning that one. But um, yeah, he is better than the guy. I know, I know. But all right, I also know that this conversation is alien. Got me. <laughs> I know. And look, I apologize. Anybody who does, this is rude for me to talk about this stuff since not everybody knows about it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but um but yeah, I do like playing games. Um, <laughs> okay, this is just bad. I mean, it's good, but it's bad. Um, um, but do you know, no, I, okay, look, I'll say this. Wait, will I say this? Should I say this right now? 
Uh, yeah, I, remind, I've got more to say about this. I'm not going to do it now, but yeah, we could talk a lot about games for sure. Um, I'd be happy to. Um, um, uh, and I do wish, I really wish that the, I wish that Pokemon Sword had controls like like Minecraft and like um, Mario Odyssey. I mean, they they really need a good camera on Pokemon Sword. It's pathetic, but okay. Um, but I think Mario Odyssey has the best control. I that the, the game rocks. Um, and I'm terrible at it, but okay. Um, 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 so the this is what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm saying this, and again, I'm, and I'm, we're about to get an answer, right? We'll, we'll, but I know a lot of you, so a lot of, some people did get this wrong, but a lot of you got it right. But even if you got it right, I know probably you did not write all these lines down that I'm doing right now. Like I'm trying to show you the, uh, and it doesn't mean, you know, you might've gotten full credit anyway, but I am trying to show you the sort of the optimal way to do physics work. I, I, and I do think dragging it out a little bit is a good idea, especially when you think you know what you're doing. The more you think something is obvious, the more you should break it down into smaller steps because those smaller steps is what you then refer back to when you don't know what to do, for real. So it is a good exercise to break down when you think things are easy, to break them down into smaller. And, I'm, and maybe you didn't think this was easy, but anyway, we have this. I keep forgetting, oh, A was A, A. So this is what I'm saying is the answer. I'm saying that I that you may not have shown all of this work, but this, but this is strictly correct. I do think even if you didn't show all this work, I do want to encourage you to get in the habit of putting in the numbers in last. It's a hard habit to do at first. You, if you don't do it that way, you will resist it at first. It will seem annoying and stupid, but that's a good sign that something is happening, like that you are exercising different muscles in your brain if you try to get in that habit. Also, I'm saying technically, yes, it's plus or minus if you think about it. I think that does physically make sense. Like if, if, if you think that this spring can extend as much to one side as it can compress to the other, it sort of makes sense. That, I mean, maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but it makes sense to me that this, well, I am kind of jumping the gun, but we started the mass all the way out here at 15 centimeters with a speed of zero. We let it go. It starts moving in toward equilibrium. We concluded in question four that by the time it gets to equilibrium, it has a bunch of speed. Notice that, by the way, by the time it gets to equilibrium, the mass has a bunch of speed, like 3.87 meters per second worth. We don't think it's speed zero. It gets to equilibrium with a ton of speed. So it keeps going, presumably. Like, I'm again, I'm sort of jumping to another question here, but if it has all that speed, then it can't stop. It's not, it, it hasn't stopped, so it's gonna keep going you might guess that how far is it going to go on the other side? I mean, I asked that later in the sheet and, and I think all of you correctly said, well, if there's really no friction, it's going to go all the way on the other side to the same place to 15 centimeters um, to the left of equilibrium. Completely correct. If you're seeing that symmetry and there is that, that symmetry going on, if you're seeing that, then it sort of stands to reason that, okay, the, the, the mass started all the way out here at a velocity of zero. It's going faster and faster and faster as it cruises in toward the equilibrium position. It's going faster and faster and faster as it cruises toward a speed of 3.87. So if the question is, where does it hit a spot of three? Well, first of all, the answer 0.095 is, I'm not saying it's definitely right, but it certainly seems reasonable 0.095 because that's somewhere in between zero and 0.15, right? Like it's gonna get down to this, I mean, it's gonna get up from, speed zero up to speed three, somewhere before it gets all the way to speed 3.87. So we find this position 0.095, but if you're following this, it also makes sense that then at equilibrium, the thing's gonna start slowing down, slowing down, moving toward the other side, and it'll hit that speed of three again on the other side at negative 0.095. Like, and that's what the math, the math bears that out. 
again, you might not have done all the work this way, but notice if you started off by saying this, if, if you started off by saying this, you would get the wrong answer. Like that would be wrong because it's really not true. That statement, and remember that statement, if you write it down, what it means is that the potential energy at some location equals the kinetic energy at some other location. Like that's what that statement would mean. That happened to be the case for question four because we were dealing with two extreme points. One point where we fully ran out of kinetic energy and the other where we fully ran out of potential. That's not the case here. So that's why we don't, like, that's why we didn't start with that statement or why that statement would get you a wrong answer if you got like 0.116 or 0.113 or something. It's like wrong for that reason. All right. I'm gonna, does that, that is question five. I'm talking a lot, a lot, a lot. But oh, woo, oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, I like this guy. I really like this class. Woo. I like this class. Okay. Um, uh, uh, All right, remind me, I'm gonna put in a Nukma, not Nukma, I'm gonna put in a game thing. I'm gonna do a thing for 50 points for anybody. If you can make a joke out of a correct answer, great. That's 50 points right there. Remind me, I'll put in one for that. But um, is there any question on question five? And again, of course, we'll go faster and faster. We're just trying to get warm up here, but or as fast as you want. But if there's no question on five, I'm gonna to go to question six. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, and I appreciate that, by the way. Kameza, am I saying? Kameza, if I'm saying it right. I appreciate that. Kameza, yeah, oh no, yes? No. Kameza. Oh, sorry, Kameza, I'm sorry, Kameza. Okay, thank you. I, I just wanna point out also, and maybe this is something I should give extra points for if I remember. I like the fact that Kameza said understood now. That's a gutsy thing to say, but it's super helpful to me. Like she might, she's tacitly acknowledging there that maybe she didn't fully understand it before. That is helpful to me. That is not that, I mean, I don't mean to embarrass her, but I, I wanna praise that. Like anybody at any, it's one thing to say you get what's going on, but another to say you just got something like that means it was worth your while. That makes me feel better. You know, like I'm happy to hear that. And I do know from them, yeah, this was one that a lot of people did get wrong. So, I'm, but if this, okay, but do, but if, the, yeah, I appreciate that. That's what we're here for. I mean, believe me, if no one ever knew anything that I was talking about, that would be frustrating in one way. But if I felt that everything I was saying, you all already always knew, that would also be a total waste of all of your time and mine, right? So it's good to know if we're saying things that are helping us along. Um, but okay, but if this makes sense now, that's good. I'm gonna assume it does. I'll go, um, I'll go to question six. And also let me say, even when my eye contact is terrible, I am out of the corner of my eye. I'm noticing there are a lot more videos here than I usually see and I really appreciate that. I, I am noticing that even if it doesn't seem. Um, all right, so question six. Oh, now it gets a little bit more conceptual and maybe even easier. You might remind me, is question six the one that asks how many will, how far will it go on the other side? The thing that I already answered. Um, someone might want to just remind me of what questions. Yes, okay, thank you. All right, so the answer to question number six, I mean, simply is this. Here's an example too, where I think it's technically negative, but if you originally said that your force this is an example. If you said that your answers to question one and two, like if you said your force was positive 30 newtons and your acceleration was positive 100 meters per second squared, let's say that even, you know, and somehow you defend that. And I gave, then I, I could give you full credit for that, but then your answer here would hopefully be positive 0.15 if you follow what I'm saying. Like you, that's what I mean by consistency. But I think for most of us, our answer here would be negative 0.15. Um, and it is for exactly the reason you think. I mean, you can just do it in your head. Yes, it's just because there's no friction. So you'd be right just to sort of guess or intuit that this whole thing should be symmetric and it'll end up the same place on the other side. But the true proof of that or the true re, and, and that's fine, and it's full credit. Like I get that it may be sort of obvious to you, but the real reason that it's obvious or the real reason that it's true is that energy is conserved. That is uh, what we're, and again, you don't have to put this right here in your homework, but I'm just saying you No, it does work. In other words, we're not lying or making things up to make them convenient. We are saying, again, that it's just, that this is what energy, all the symmetry that you think you might apply to this problem is correct, but it literally is what energy conservation means, that sort of symmetry. I'm gonna write that down in a second. What I'm saying right here though is, 
look, if we're, if we're asking how far we'll be on the other side, then if what we know, if what we know is the X at one side and we're looking for the X at the other side, we're doing energy conservation and what we're actually saying is by side by what we're at if we're asking where will it be on the other side when it turns around we're asking where's the other spot where this object has zero velocity like the first spot where it has zero velocity is 15 centimeters on the right we're asking where's the other spot where it has zero velocity so mathematically what we're really saying is this Right, we're saying if at what, at, and what we're really saying is, oh, yeah. I mean, if we're looking for the other place where it has no kinetic energy, then at that other place, it must have all of its energy must be potential, which was true in the first place. Like we're looking for the two places where all the energy is potential. Therefore, we're looking for the two places with the exact same amount of potential energy. Therefore, both x's are the same. I'm just just saying. So it is a mathematical. You can show this mathematically. Um, and ultimately what this says is, well, oh, oh, here. This is actually a deep thing. I, um, I'll try not to dwell on it for too long right now, but you know, symmetry is sameness. There are different kinds of sameness in the world, but there's a certain kind of symmetry in time that is represented every time we have an energy conserving system. What I specifically, in fact, I, I, as long as I'm gonna say this, I wanna, I'm gonna to have to go on the next page for this, sorry, but what I'm saying so far, this is, a, this is what I'm saying, any system that conserves energy, and there are a number of them will come up in this class, any system that conserves energy is a system that is symmetric in time, that demonstrates a certain type of time symmetry. Now, the type of time symmetry that I'm asserting here is a specific type. And so in order to, in order to understand what I'm saying first, so this is what we mean by time symmetry, First you take, oops, sorry. First you take a uh, video, you make a video of the phenomenon. Like, so in this case, we're talking about a mass going back and forth on a spring. So you make a video of that for a while. You, or you imagine making a video for that. 
of that. Then you imagine that you're gonna play that video for someone else who like wasn't there in the first place, okay? Like big deal, you're gonna play the video. But here's a twist. Okay, now this, this, this sounds like a little digression. This is totally on the point of the physics. This is a weird physics idea. I mean, maybe you've heard it before, maybe you haven't, but I'm saying now, like we've got this mass going back, back and forth on a spring, back and forth. And we take a movie of it, or you, we make a movie of it, okay? And then we walk up to our friend or to our cat or our, or our, we walk up to somebody and um, we say, okay, I've got this video of like some like lab phenomenon that I just did or like this thing that just happened and I made a video of it and I'm gonna play you the video. But now I might play the, you the video normally, like the way it was filmed, or I might actually play the whole thing literally backwards. I'm gonna play it for you and I'm not gonna tell you which one I did, whether I played it forward or backward, but I want you to tell me once you're done watching the video, whether I played it forward or backwards, okay? Now you're not even telling them what it's a video of, you're just saying, I've got this video and I might play it for you backwards, but I might play it for you forwards. And I want you to tell me which one it was. Now, the reason this is like a weird thing, I mean, it all sounds very obscure, but what I'm getting at is if you did this with this type of phenomenon, with a mask going back and forth on a spring, like to get to the chase, the other person, if you're following me, I think you'll see the other person would not be able to guess right? The movie is going to look the absolute same, whether you play it forward or backward. Like if you played for a while, if you filmed for a while, like can you see like the, 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 right? If you play that backwards, you're still going to see da, 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 da. And literally let's even imagine putting numbers in. Let's imagine that you, it is a computer simulation or something so that every time the mask gets to an end, like it's little speed pops up like on a flag or something, or, you know, it's speed is denoted in a speedometer, in a speedometer. Um, and let's say its positions are noted, notated the whole way or something. So you're even getting data while you watch this movie, if you like. But even if you get data while you're watching this movie, like whether the movie is played li, 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 or played, li, 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 it's still going to look the same, right? You're not going to be able to tell whether the movie was made properly or not, but not because nobody told you what to expect. Like this is all in contrast to if I took a movie of a car going down the road, let's say, I mean, really like actual car going down the road. And then I played that movie for you backwards. Well, on the one hand, who knows whether the car was going forward or driving in reverse. You might say, well, actually, if you play that movie for backwards, I would just see a car in reverse. So how do I know that that's not realistic? Like maybe that's not what the car was doing, but what, there's nothing wrong with that. It could have been a car in reverse. And that would be true except, and now here's gonna sound like a technical point, but if you're actually making a good movie of a car and you're actually looking at it carefully, you would notice that when the cars go, well, actually, let me ask you guys, I'm being a little bit technical here. So you might think this is like a trick question or something, but if you look really closely at a movie of a car, like how could you 
And even if it was going, how could you tell if you saw the car going backwards, how could you tell that that was actually a movie being run backwards and not a realistic car actually? Like what evidence in the movie would give away the fact that the car didn't actually do that, if that makes sense? Or should I ask it again? I'm basically saying if a car reverses down a road and you take a movie of it, that actually looks different from if you if a car goes forward and you take a movie and then run the movie backwards. But it is a subtle, does anybody, do you see what I'm even at? I'm gonna pause on this. I want, do you get the question? Should I ask the question again? Uh, let me say, I'm gonna ask the question one more time because I'm asking you guys. So there's a moment to choose. Oh, yes, awesome, exactly. Uh, oh, I don't even know if that was a, that was a public chat, yes. Okay, you get like a bajillion points for that, Lars. Um, First of all, it's good to hear from all of you. That's cool. That's a new person that for today. That's great. Second of all, but just to say, that's right. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to trick anybody. If you think that's like a technical point, I'll try to explain why I'm maybe a, a cup of coffee with steam coming out of it would be even a better point. That is, I, 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 D, D, K. I don't ever know. No, I don't exactly know what cars are. Oh, even, oh, okay. I'm so freaking old. Um, no, no, it is hard. Wait, and it's, I don't, and again, if I just put that on a test and an exam, maybe that's almost unfair, but we're, you know, we're just friends here. We're just discussing what Lars, what I want to say is Lars actually happened to be, what he wrote is exactly what I am thinking. But can I also say that, let's say he was wrong. Let's say I was thinking something else. That is a perfect example of something that he should submit. He should double dip that. He should Put that in for class participation, just regular 50 points. Like he said something, he put in the chat, yay. But also he said something that was subject to right or wrong. Like I'm happy, it turns out he was right. So I'm saying he's right. But he, but it was so specific, it could have been wrong, right? Either way, that was gutsy to put that. Also he had to know about cars, whatnot. But so he's gonna double dip that into both of the assignment portals. He's gonna say for today, like a game turn three, I said exhaust pipe. And then in the other one that says like four right or wrong, He's gonna say, I said it was like the exhaust pipe because I literally could have said then that's wrong, dude. I mean, hopefully I wouldn't say it like that, but, but, but so A, first of all, guts, I mean, yay. But second of all, what am I getting at with this weird question? What I'm getting at is that some processes are not reversible like that. Some processes like in nature, cars do not back up down a street, sucking exhaust into them. Like if I put it up and yes, maybe we don't all know about cars. So a better example, maybe a better example is just put a cup of coffee on your desk. You put a cup of coffee, like a hot, fresh from the blah, blah, blah. You put it from five guys, if they serve coffee, which they don't put a cup of coffee on your desk and be close enough that you can actually see the steam rising up from the coffee film that coffee for like two minutes and just film the steam coming up from it, right? Now, if you go and play me that movie backwards, I'm gonna see, instead of seeing steam rise out of a cup of coffee, I'm gonna see steam going into a cup of coffee. That does not happen like in nature, right? I would see that and know that's a, that must be wrong. Like that must be backwards. That didn't actually happen. Right, and it would be it would be true. Like some processes are not symmetric in time. When you put a cup of coffee on the table, it is not an energy conserving system. If by energy I mean mechanical energy, if I mean kinetic plus potential, that cup of coffee, it like is um, is not. <laughs> oh oh wow! Wait, I'm catching up. No, it is hard to think about. Wait, it is. And the, and the, no, the wheels, right. Wheels can go both ways. Things, a lot of things can go both ways, but it tends to be processes that involve in any way heat. Like, so the exhaust pipe, by the, if you don't know about cars, I mean, in a car, there's a pipe in the back where just like the crap, like the junk, the, the waste product in, 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 um, that are, tend to be in gaseous form are coming out the pipe. I mean, I mean, coming out the car, like, you know, the car is eating fuel and it's pooping exhaust, just like a human being or any other, you know, process would. But the thing is, once you're, so to speak, pooping exhaust, like that is a thermal process that happens in a certain direction. That is energy being released, not energy being conserved. And whenever that happens, it, it happens in a flow of time that is noticeable. I'm, so what I'm saying here to everybody is, 
there are specific processes in nature that conserve energy. It, when they conserve, one feature of conserving energy is any process that conserves energy will be symmetric in time. Like another example, another example is just throwing a ball up and having it fall back to your hand, like in gravity, just like playing, you know, you throw a ball up and it comes back down. Even just the throwing up part is symmetric in time. Like, like I could throw a ball up, right? And then I could show you the movie of that and you won't be able to tell. Like if I throw a ball up and make a movie, even if I reverse that movie and show it to you so the ball's coming down, you actually won't be able to tell that I did that because balls do fall down in life. And not only do they fall down, but they when they fall, they get faster and faster. So, so Whereas when they go up, they get slower and slower. So if I took an actual ball, threw it up in the air, made a movie of it, and even if I put data in that movie, you'd see like the ball started at 50 miles an hour and then 40 miles an hour, or whatever, you know, whatever the numbers are, like 19.6 meters per second, then 9.8 meters per second, let's say, and then zero. So if I play that movie backwards, it's gonna go zero, 9.8, 19.6. That's not what actually happened, but that could have been what happened because gravity is a conservative force, whatever it takes away from you, it gives to you, which means that whatever you do under the influence of only gravity could happen forwards or backwards. They're both permissible by nature. So any movie, like you couldn't tell. That's what I mean by time symmetry. Does that, oh, okay, okay. Oh, Foster, oh, you guys are great. I love how you like then have these discussions and it's like, it's like you're actually talking in class about stuff, weird. Okay, wait, so I'm looking at this. Same would go for running water. Right. No, it is a really you know, the water example is a really good example. Hold on. This is a good example. It's tricky. The I have to agree. Wait. Oh, I see what you guys are saying. Yes, yes, that's a good point. Right. Like, okay, so if right, I like I like all this. I like the water example. And yes, if it's if you're literally showing the faucet in the movie, it would be a little bit weird to imagine water just being sucked up into a faucet. That's true. But I also agree with those, but I like the example though, because it's true. If you just isolate, if you just isolate, like, well, this is where it gets tricky. I mean, things falling down can just as easily go up. But once you're getting into liquids or gases, like there tends, I mean, there tends to be a shape of that water that might be a little bit complicated. But you know, the fact is I can take a bucket of water and throw the water up and, if the, and and you capture that on film. And I'm not sure how different that would look from running a film of water falling down backwards. I mean, I totally agree. It would make all the difference whether the actual faucet's in your movie or not. But in general, okay, let me... Just to be as clear as possible. Oh, oh. yeah, editing matters for everything, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My God, you guys are funny. I mean, this is good. This this class might really not suck, um, which I appreciate. Um, I didn't say that, but I do say that. But um, what I'm saying here is 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 six thirty. I'm saying 
there are a number of, there, there's tons of forces in the world. Some of them are conservative. The list of conservative forces um, has some items on it that we will learn. There are forces that are conservative that we will learn in this class that we haven't learned yet. But right now of all the forces we've ever heard about in the world or learned about, the two forces that we are supposedly know anything about at this moment that we would call conservative are the elastic slash spring force, same thing. Like the, for, the, the force of elasticity, the spring force, F equals negative Kx, that is a conservative force. It does what I'm saying here. It, it is symmetric in time. It conserves mechanical energy. And the gravitational force is also conservative. Near the surface of the Earth, we approximate that to be mg. But once you're in the universe anywhere away from Earth, in general, it's GMM over R squared. That also is conservative. Those are the only two forces we know so far to be conservative. I will tell you that we're going to get to the electrostatic force soonish, and that also will be conservative. But right now, these are the two, sorry, conservative ones that we know. These two are, whenever these two, when only these forces are acting, or like when only conservative forces are acting, your situation will be time symmetric in sort of the way that we're talking about right now. Um, okay. Yeah, let's get a little farther. In the, I, there's always something more that could be said, but let's go a little farther in the sheet. And I'm also aware that it's been a long day. We're, we're almost there, but let's go a little farther in the sheet, unless there are questions, please. Oh, cool, wow. Oh, 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 great. Wait, wait, Veronica's question. No, first of all, I'm glad that somebody put that link in. That's cool. Um, it's such a, it's also a really cool. Well, anyway, thank you, Skylar, for that. But also Veronica's question. Oh, yeah, friction is non-conservative. And the mere fact you asked it, let's be, let me be as clear as I can. Yeah, here's all, here are non-conservative forces. Yeah, friction is non-conservative, yes. Um, These are the main ones. These are all non-conservative and notice about all these, this tends, this is not. Generally speaking, forces that seem to involve touching, like one object touching another, tend not to be conservative um, like these. Um, and certainly any processes that involve heat, I mean, that gets into stuff that isn't always physics, like that can quickly become chemistry and stuff, but any process that involves heat exchange is generally not conservative, um, but okay. So that was question five, that was question six. So question then seven, I think, and we're almost there. I think question seven then was the one like, if you assume there's no friction, how many times does this thing go back and forth? Is that correct? Yeah, thank you. I saw that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, that's a million points right there. So yeah, um, I think most of you saw right away in question seven. And we're just asking this to, basically, this is just a way of confirming from here on in, if you're picturing symmetry, if you ever think, oh, what's going on on this side, I'll, uh, he's asking me about something on that side, but I could just figure it's the same as what's going on, on that side, you'd be right. Any instincts that you have of patterns or symmetries in the motion of something going back and forth on a spring, not only are you right, but I want you to rely on them. Like some of these dumb questions are there just to establish like, yes, if you think that an ideal spring would go back and forth forever, always between the same two endpoint positions, that is what we're saying about an ideal spring. Of course, a spring in reality is not ideal, but the better a spring is, the closer it'll come to acting like that. Um, so yes, infinity is the answer to seven and then eight, we're almost there. Eight is then, I believe, where I asked, what about the speed? Like, this is where I asked.
Okay, just to remind you, and I know you did this, but this next question, we're picturing, and this is pretty much, yeah, okay. We're picturing just this first chunk of motion. Like we release the mass at 15 centimeters. It's cruising its way in toward um, equilibrium. And then things will continue to happen from there, right? Like we already said, like it's gonna keep moving and stuff, but we're not focusing on that for question eight. For question eight, we're just focusing on this first chunk, just from initial spot to equilibrium. And we're gonna ask what's happening to the magnitude of various measurements or quantities we're about to look at. But remember, the, like some of you got, this got confusing to some of you on the homework thing. Like I know that what's happening to signs might be tricky. Like, like we were saying before, whether you're calling the acceleration negative or positive may be a tricky issue, but I don't wanna worry about that for question eight. I'm just looking at numbers here, like assuming there is any velocity at all or any acceleration, I wanna know if the number is probably getting bigger or smaller on the way toward equilibrium. So for 8a, we said like, what's happening to the magnet? Oh, well, yes, we, 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 we said what's happening to the magnitude of speed. And uh, sorry, we asked what's happening to the magnitude of velocity, which we call speed. Sorry, just be consistent here. And I think almost everyone who did the homework, I think almost everyone, you got this right. I don't, you said, and I'm saying it's increasing. Right, for the, and no, for no, it's just not meant to be a trick. It's not meant to be complicated. It's just that like the initial velocity was zero and then the velocity at equilibrium was 3.87. So, okay, the velocity is going up. That's all I'm looking for. Um, and it's going up continuously, right? Like it didn't stagger around it you know, in a little while it's doing three meters per second and then it's eventually doing 3.87. So, okay, the velocity is increased. The magnitude of velocity, whether you call it a positive or negative number, the magnitude is increasing in that first section. And most of you said that and got it right and that's fine. Then I asked about acceleration and most of you got this right. I think the answer is decrease. And I'm not trying to rush this, but and the answer, here, the reason for decrease here is equally not meant to be tricky. Like the acceleration right at the beginning, everybody told me was like 30 or negative 30 newtons. Right now, I don't care if you call it a negative or not, but the magnitude of it was, or I'm sorry, not 30. I mean, like hundred newtons, the acceleration was all the way at the end. But then at the center at equilibrium, the acceleration is zero. That's what equilibrium means. So the acceleration went, down in magnitude. And let's pause for a second. Like that's already kind of an interesting idea. Like it's very, very easy and instinctive to think that when something's speeding up, its acceleration is increasing. People in fact often tend to say things casually like that, like, oh, it's speeding up. So it's acceleration is increasing. Well, no, if something's speeding up, it has acceleration. It's, its speed is increasing, but its acceleration could be decreasing while it's in, while its velocity is increasing. That's a big thing in physics. Velocity and acceleration are totally related, but they're not the same thing, right? So this object here is getting faster and faster as it's moving. It is getting faster and faster. It started off by not moving at all, and it's going faster and faster by the time it gets to equilibrium, it's moving very fast. So it is gaining speed, but the rate at which, but, but the rate at which it's gaining speed is lessening, meaning like at the beginning it had zero speed, so then maybe like one second later, all of a sudden, maybe it has like two meters per second of speed. But then another second later, it doesn't gain another two meters per second. It only gains like one meter per second or something. So it doesn't go like zero, two, four, six, eight or something. It goes like zero, two, three, three and a half, 3.87. Like the gain, it's gaining velocity, but the gains are getting smaller just to, right? And that is not a contradiction. It's perhaps even interesting. Then I, but it is true. Wait, so, oh, you, what? <laughs> Wait, where is the dog? Is the dog still here? Oh, no, it's like, oh, wow. I'm going to, if you, wow, I'm going to have to fire myself to save trouble in this class. I was going to fire myself and like skip the whole, I mean, but okay, uh, that A, that's B. Now C is where, okay. C, if we want to, I'm going to, C is where people didn't get it right, because C is hard. C, 
now pushes us to a realm where we have to like think and we don't necessarily know. Um, C, I'm, I'm also asking something that we've never really thought about in physics one, perhaps. I'm using the term jerk. Jerk technically means change in acceleration, just like acceleration means change in velocity and velocity means change in position per time. All this is per time. If you're down with calculus, which we'll talk about, if you know anything about calculus, like technically velocity is the first derivative of position with respect to time. Acceleration is the derivative of that. Like acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So you might say acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time. I think I even wrote this in some of your homeworks, right? Well, what jerk, jerk is just the English name for it. Third derivative of position with respect to time. Like it is actually the name. And it's kind of like if, if speed is what your car is doing, and if acceleration is what your car does when you press on the gas pedal, and some of us don't know about cars, yellow, L, M, L, A, O, I, D, K, blah, blah. But like, if you could picture a car, um, when a car is moving, it has speed. When you press on the pedal and it starts speeding up, it has acceleration. If the car is like a standard shift, like an old, you know, old fashioned standard transmission, and you shift the gears, you're probably now not just velocitizing or accelerating, you're probably jerking. You're probably accelerating the acceleration, so to speak, right? That's what we mean by jerk here. Even if we've never mentioned before, it's just an extension of an old concept. Now I'm asking, what do we think would happen to the jerk? What would happen to this type of motion in a mass spring system? It's not something that you'd look up or that you would already know. We're like thinking about it for the first time now. How can we possibly, and, and most people did get this wrong. I mean. It, the answer is not constant. And the, and the answer is also not decrease. I mean, I guess by process of elimination, I just told you what the answer is, but like, how could I think about this? Or what would I expect you to do? Good question. One thing I might do is note, look for patterns. Like I asked you about velocity and I asked about acceleration, something maybe I should have asked, or maybe you go back and ask yourself, once you see something developing here, like I could have gone back and asked myself, what about, position itself. Like maybe I, maybe I jumped too fast in, into looking at these questions. Like vo acceleration is change in velocity per time. Velocity is change in position per time. So let me just back up and ask myself, what is happening? And I'm asking myself, I mean, you can answer if you want, but like the object started at a position that we called 0.15 right, if we're being consistent with all of this, and it ended up at a position that we called zero, right, like it sped up from zero speed to 3.87 speed, but the place where this thing was, if we're keeping track of all this consistently, it went from place 0.15 to place zero, so the position, he left, he was overwhelmed, <laughs> I think, that's going to happen to me, it's my, I'm sorry, he was overwhelmed, um, but what's the position doing then? If it's going from 0.15 to zero, the position, is it decreasing or increasing? And I'm totally asking the dog, no, I'm, does anybody want to tell me whether the, so I'm saying the velocity increased, the acceleration decreased. I'm not asking you the homework question. I'm backing up and asking a new, a different question, but what did the position do? Did the position increase or he'll be back? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, we're never going to get to nine at this pace, but it's okay. We'll all like learn a lot along the way. No, we'll get to nine. I'll tell I'll bring in my, sorry, I'm pausing because I'm so happy right now. Um, uh, but does anybody want to answer this question of the position? Yes. Thank you. Now I'm really happy. Like that, that, now it made it all worth it. Yes. So you're here on every level. Yes. The position is totally increasing. Uh, I'm sorry. Is, oh, wait. Oh, sorry. No, um, I totally appreciate wait, that's 50 points right there. Okay. I'm now going to do something I don't feel very comfortable doing. I don't like doing this very much. I'm going to do this quick, but I will say that Skyla's answer is totally or and and uh Vanietta's answer both 50 points or maybe even 75 for having the guts to act to show that they were paying attention to be with me, all that. I have to quietly, politely, actually, I'll just tell this to the dog who's out of the room. I actually think those answers are not right. I don't like saying that. They are technically, say, wrong. You're not going to get me to say that twice, but I actually think the, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. 
Sure, thank you. If okay, um, and the same goes for Yaverbaum. You don't have to say Yaverbaum. It has to do okay. The but yes, I the truth is I I'm totally glad that that right. I think the actual answer is actually decreasing. It's not meant to be a trick question or weird or shame anybody. And again, as soon as I put that for right, oh, I did. Like totally V should submit what she just wrote. And also um, and also, um, Skyla should totally double dip and in that for right or wrong portal, like they should use as an example that they said that the thing was increasing. That is points right there. I might've even said it's 75 points. I don't remember. It does happen that I think I disagree. I think the thing is, that the position is decreasing simply because it's going from right from positive 0.15 meters to zero meters. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is if you, and it might be a semantic thing, it might not have been clear what the question meant or whatever, but if this is clear now that I'm, oh, cool. That's a really good, cool. I appreciate what Skylar just said there. No, it, and again, Good, you're a better person than I am. Um, um, so I think the answer is decrease. And the reason I'm bringing it up, and please note also, that was not asked in the homework. This has not like no one, you know, I'm asking it now to help with the homework because I think that if we back up and look at that, then we kind of have a pattern emerging here. It looks like position decreases, velocity increases, acceleration decreases. This doesn't prove anything. But now that I put that little third answer in there, certainly if I don't know what to do, like this is a multiple choice question, like pretend it was an exam. I'm asking whether the, the jerk thing, the, the derivative of acceleration, I'm asking whether it increases, decreases, or stays the same. So you have three choices, right? Uh, ideally, you'll know for a fact the right answer, but you might not. We're trying to figure something out, right? So what I just did was I just established a pattern. This pattern does not prove that the answer, it doesn't prove the answer at all. But what it does do is give me a good reason for picking one answer over the others. Like if all other things are equal, I now have at least a defense for a guess. I'm gonna guess, in other words, I'm gonna literally conjecture or guess. Um, this is a guess, but it has a good justification or a good, yeah, a good defense. The defense of the guess is that there's a pattern here. And if the pattern holds, it, it won't allow for any other answer but that. Now we don't know for a fact that the pattern's gonna hold. So we, so we may still have to discuss this more. Basically the point of all guesses in science is to gives you something to work with. And then you, now you know what direction you wanna go and now you wanna prove that guess. That's sort of maybe what we're gonna try to do in the next question. Um, but I don't have any other reason to write anything else down. So if this were an exam or if this were like a publication or a contest for the Nobel Prize, I don't want to write nothing. So I'm going to write down an um, uh, 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 increase. And my reason for writing that is this pattern. And basically my pattern will stay as a really good reason until someone shows me that the path, if someone gives me a reason for the pattern to fall apart, that's one thing. But until they give me a reason for the pattern to fall apart, it is a pattern. And I'm not sure who the burden of proof is on, like whether it's on me to prove that the pattern will go forever um, or you to prove that the pattern will stop. I'll say this, question seven is kind of put there on purpose to give you more and more confidence in believing that if you're seeing patterns here, the patterns really may well go on forever. In fact, I am asserting that. I'm not saying you should totally believe me yet, but I'm sort of trying to explain how we think about these things. Once you see that energy conservation mathematically means a certain kind of symmetry in time or a certain kind of reliability or regularity or pattern, actually, once you see that there's a mathematical reason for that pattern, that's a good reason to trust that it really is a pattern and as long as you believe that the cycles are gonna go on forever and they're gonna go on forever between two same positions, if you believe this, the positions are gonna interchange with each other forever, and if you believe that positions and speeds will interchange with each other forever, like in other words, the more you gain in position, the less you'll gain in speed, I'm sorry, the more you gain in position, the, the less you'll gain in acceleration, but the more you'll gain in speed. Like once you see that that's 
be seeming to be true at the beginning. And once you say that this thing should go on forever without change, there's now more and more reason to really solidly believe my guess that I put down that in fact the jerk should um, that the jerk should increase just like the velocity did. Now, by the way, that is the right answer. Like, I'm not trying to fool anybody. We're not going to end up finding out that that's wrong. It is right. I'm just saying, if you're not wholly satisfied yet, I think you'll maybe become more satisfied if we ever get to question nine. But my basic reason right now is we seem to be saying that there's a pattern and we seem to be saying that energy conservation will continue that pattern without fail. Um, okay, wait. Oh, 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 great question. By the way, thank you, Crystal, for the O. I like the O. Now, Kat's question, great question. We may end up on this. I mean, the sad thing is, are we going to get to question nine today? Okay, maybe not. I feel terrible, but I don't really feel that terrible. Um, and, and the truth is, question nine is really what next week's lab is all about in a way to introduce you. So don't consider yourself behind on question one. Consider yourself ahead in the lab curriculum in a way. But 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 so to Kat's question, will she said, will the jerk always be talking at the same Zoom channel? No, I, oh, no, no. She said, will the jerk always increase when velocity is increasing? Are the two directly related? Really good question. Uh, so the simple answer is no. Uh, the simple answer is for a spring, what we're learning right now is like springs or technically we're learning about oscillators. For an oscillator of this kind, yes. So that's why this is worth writing down. It's not true about velocity and jerk, like in general in life. They don't stay in lockstep like that in life necessarily. But they will, in fact, this is a good place to end. This spring motion, okay, everything we're looking at right now, this is where we're going to end. So, so what I'm saying to Kat is, yes, they will, as long as we're talking about this type of motion. And this type of motion from here on in is going to be called simple harmonic oscillation. That's what, so, okay. And, and whenever it's oscillation, then yes, is the answer to Kat's question. Okay. All right, so first of all, so what we're, so our first real topic, the first, the big thing that we're studying here in physics, what, um, this, this larger topic is called harmonic oscillation. Oscillation in general means back and forth motion, specifically means, pa means periodic or cyclical, repeated motion. So oscillation can be back and forth like this mass on the spring, or it could be like, you know, those fans that are called oscillating fans where they there's like where they're spinning on an axis while they while their blades spin like oscillation doesn't literally have to be back and forth oscillation could even be like laps around a track i suppose but as long as it's repeated and patterned and periodic where like the same type of things happening over and over that's what we call oscillation but then harmonic is the key here
Okay, there's a lot in this statement. Again, you know, we probably really are not going to get to nine today, and that's really is okay uh, by me. But but we are actually saying a lot of things that we some of which we would have had to say later anyway. Um, the type of motion that's actually very the, the type of properties that are going to emerge. The, the reason we're looking at these numbers and spending all this time on this mass going back and forth on the spring is. It's going back and forth, but it turns out when we say that it conserves energy, we, we find that it's going back and forth in a kind of special, nice, reliable way. It's not just that the thing is going back and forth because lots of things can go back and forth. Like I can go back and forth running laps in my room, like while teaching here, I can oscillate, but this thing is not just oscillating, it's harmonically oscillating, meaning that it's going back and forth at a steady rate. We haven't found what that rate is, but it seems like something is steady, but we are going to find it. And it seems like there is a steadiness here. Like, again, we seem to be saying that there's a pattern, that there's a even interchange of kinetic and potential energy at all times. What we're ultimately going to find, what we're saying is that this thing is not just going back and forth, but it's going back and forth at a, a rate that is steady, constant. Like the number of cycles, like this thing, to be oscillating is to be cyclical. And what we're going to find or what we like about this particular mass spring system is it's not just cyclical, it's that each one of its cycles is going to take a certain amount of time that is not changing. Like, and by cycle, I mean go there and come back. Like this thing is going there, back, there, back, there, back. It's doing a certain number of these there, backs per second, or it's taking a certain number of seconds to do every one of these there, backs. As long as we can establish to ourselves, as long as we can find some reason for believing that the number of cycles per second or the number of seconds per cycle, as long as we believe that that is a steady fixed number that isn't changing, then we're going to call this harmonic. In other words, it's possible to oscillate in a sort of like randomish spazzy way, like the way I walk, or it's possible to oscillate in a harmonic way, which strictly speaking means steady frequency. But now even better than that, I'm going to say like the deepest point of all, which we're going to spend a lot of time on is, it's not just that the frequency is constant and steady, that's already sort of cool, but that the steady rate of the frequency we're going to find is a number that has nothing to do with amplitude. And by amplitude, I mean, oh, I guess I should define that, sorry. Next page, sorry. I mean this one here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Jesus. All right. You know, the bassist for Queen had a PhD in astrophysics. You know, Queen, that group, like We Will Rock You. The ba you got, you, if you like that group at all, no, oh, who's my dog, right? Um, by the way, also, the band had a dog named Jack, but I mean, the band called the band, but, uh, um, but, uh, yeah, but the band Queen, if you've ever listened to Queen, you know, like we will rock you and we are the champions and all that. When you're really bored sometimes, Google the bassist for that band or Wikipedia. He's got a whole Wikipedia page. He's unbelievable. That dude was like, he's a total astrophysicist. And yet he's like a rock and roller. You know, go no. But um, um, uh, 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 but in England, you can be both, I guess. Um, what the heck's my point? My point is that uh, if amplitude, so amplitude in the, in this case means X naught, okay? Like the X naught term, the 0.15 meters in this particular problem, that's the initial position. That's where this thing initially was. More specifically, it's the place where it was, where the mass was with zero velocity. Like that place was not just, it's not just where we started paying attention to the mass. It's where we let the mass go 
from. So it had zero kinetic energy at that spot. That ended up being the maximum stretch that the place will ever be because energy is conserved. Like the place of zero kinetic energy will be the place of full potential energy. And that's the fullest out X will ever be. So the, the, so in, this is one case, for example, where our initial position ends up being one and the same with our maximum position, like our the maximum displacement that we ever find from equilibrium. And we call such a thing the amplitude, like you know that word from other contexts in science, and it's the same idea. Amplitude means the farthest stretch or the farthest displacement from equilibrium. Can I mute my whole house while I'm teaching? Is that possible? Um, uh, uh, um, so that point 15 meters is the amplitude. And what I'm ultimately saying, and this is a, kind of a lot too, I'm saying something that I've not proven yet at all. We are going to prove it in this class, but I'm just giving you an overview definition or whatever that the reason we're looking at this mass on a spring, it's an example of a larger system called a simple harmonic oscillator. It's found everywhere in nature. It's a huge, important building block of nature. It's found on the atomic level. It's actually the subject of all of PCHEM. If you ever have to take PCHEM in this school, like, or quantum mechanics of any kind, like it all be, it, quantum mechanics and all of that analyzes atomic systems as little oscillators. Like the oscillator is a crucial ingredient in the, you know, in the Minecraft of life, like it's better than redstone or whatever. Um, and what a harmonic oscillator really is, is an oscillator that goes back and forth at a rate in time, which has nothing to do with, or in no way depends on how big the stretch of the oscillator is in space. Like I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but just to say it one more time, I'm saying that an oscillator is harmonic if it will take the same number of times to cycle back and forth, regardless of how large those cycles are in space. Like even you'll find, I mean, this is a harmonic oscillator because even if I had started the thing at three centimeters rather than 15 centimeters, what we would ultimately find is it would still go back and forth the same rate in time. Like that's how symmetric in time these things are. Uh, again, I have to develop that more later. That may be too much to say right now, but I am, but if you're following me, by the way, I am saying something that is, I think, surprising. Like if you're listening to me at all right now, you almost might be a little confused because I literally am saying, even though I haven't proven it yet, but I am saying that if I pull this mass out to 15 centimeters and let it go, then it goes like wah, 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 back and forth, like we just talked, and its maximum speed ever will be like 3.87, you know, then it'll get right to the equilibrium. And it'll go back and forth and back and forth, and it'll take some amount of time to do each back and forth. I am actually saying that if we pull that mass to um, like five centimeters, it's gonna go back and forth over a much shorter distance, much shorter distance. So you might think, oh, well, it's going back and forth over a much shorter distance, so it's gonna take a lot less time to do each back and forth cycle. But if we let this thing go from five centimeters rather than 15, we're gonna start it off with a lot less potential energy than the other one was started. And therefore, by the time it gets to the center, to the equilibrium, it's gonna have a lot less kinetic energy, i.e. on average, something that we pull out to a smaller amplitude is actually on average gonna travel a lot slower than something that we pulled out to a big amplitude. Like that's kind of what we're saying here. And what's, what's crazy is that it turns out that the two effects perfectly compensate for each other. Like there's no way that I would just predict that. I would not know this except that I know it. And I've, you know, I've, I've worked it out, you know, not just me. But like I am saying, if you picture this, like the farther you bring this mass out initially to let it go, the farther you bring it out, the faster on average, it's gonna walk back and forth. And it's gonna be faster in, by a perfect amount so that no matter where you pull this thing to a little bit to go, Blah, 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 or a lot to go blah, blah, blah. either way each oscillation will end up taking the exact same amount of time that's what we mean again i haven't proven it i'm just like like opening art saying that's where we're going with this but that's what we mean by harmonic harmonic oscillator is an oscillator that is so steady it's not just steady it's steady in time independent of scope in space um the, And all of that, oh, oh, and for any harmonic oscillator, the answer to Kat's question is, is yes, is for any harmonic oscillator, yeah, position will do one thing, 
while velocity is doing the other, the opposite, while acceleration is doing the opposite of that, while jerk is doing the opposite of that. And that pattern will go on forever. For any, again, having proven it, trying to expose you to it at the moment. But for a harmonic oscillator, we get all, patterns of patterns of patterns like this forever. The position will always be in lockstep with the acceleration and the velocity will always be in lockstep with the jerk for a harmonic oscillator. I totally have not done question nine, but it's, oh, it's 710. That's all, sorry, I didn't even need to keep you quite that long. I'm totally ready to go if you guys are ready to go, but if there's any quick question, in fact, that's fine. I love Queen. <laughs> all right, cool. Here's what I'm gonna do, because it is 710. I'm, I'm gonna sit, you guys should go, like anybody wants to go, go now. I'm just gonna sit for like a minute to make sure if there's any questions or anything like that, if anyone wants to say for a second for a question. But if you're good, I mean, I'm good if you're good and thank you guys very much. But I will sit for a second just to make sure we're all okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Really, you guys are great. Please keep it up. This is great. This is making my life much more. Not that that's your job, but I really appreciate it. Now, have a good evening. You have. A, thank you, Kellyanna. Thank you, Jennifer. So, professor, yes. for, to, for the a game turn three. That's for today's class, not last class. Cor yes. Just okay. because it said it was due at four thirty today, so I was confused if that was for like another remark for last class or for today. Oh, sorry. Oh, I did. I submitted something from last class for I that. I did too, but I can I can resubmit it from today. Because I did. I already did one from today. Oh, and yeah, that's fine. Just keep, no, it's totally fine. Even if there's an extra in there, that let's. Okay. I think my numbering system is bad, and I have to fix the numbering system. But yeah, if you turn it, so it. it Basically, yes, don't even take it back or anything. Like, even if you turned in the same thing twice, it's fine. Cause yeah, it got confusing because we all did it together that first day. But yeah, that's fine. If you already turned it in, just leave it. It's good. If that makes okay. sense. All right, cool. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Laura. Good job. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Good night, good night. Thank you, good night. Thank you. And Jesse, you're okay? Or Veronica, you're okay? Or Anietta, okay? You guys all right? So I think I'm gonna end. Oh. Yes, I'm okay. Um, Can I hand in the comment before 12 p.m.? I mean, 12 a.m.? Oh yeah, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Absolutely. And even tomorrow, it wouldn't be a big deal if it were tomorrow, but yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thank you. No problem, no problem. Um, professor, I have a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, For the last homework, when I had submitted it, like at the bottom, you wrote like rest. I know I didn't answer number nine. For future references, should I like make a note that like I tried to do number nine, but like there was like no work for it? Oh yeah, no, that's a perfect question. Yeah, for future reference, even just to acknowledge, like I'll hopefully it'll get you in the habit of knowing how to even start or something. But yeah, it, at worst, even just like acknowledge, like just like acknowledge the question and maybe even even say something like, um, like, like it's ideal to say where you got stuck or why or what you didn't understand about it or whatever. But yeah, even just acknowledging the question is is, and my advice is to put down a definition. I don't want to get too involved in this. Yes, I mean, and you'll notice even now. Hopefully, I didn't take off any points for that. I was just sort of. Like just in case you forgot to put in. No, the no, I was just, I was just asking for next time because I, I guess it does make sense that I should have like an explanation as to why I didn't start it or like where I got lost to help you. That would be the bet, right? That would be the bet. It's and it's almost even just to, to show that, yeah, that would be the best thing you could do. You just like sort of acknowledge that the question exists and and you know what the question does, but you can't do it or whatever. That it's it's just so I know that you know that we both know what the assignment was or something. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you, thank you. You too, you too. Okay, okay, okay.